Welcome to Ruston, Louisiana. It's senior day at Joe IA Stadium. A lot on the line. First place in the WAC is up for grabs as Utah State visits Louisiana Tech. Hi, everybody. I'm Trey Bender alongside former North Carolina head coach John Bunning. Glad you're with us. The WAC title is at stake here. You've got a team that's won 10 in a row in conference play in Tech. Utah State's won nine in a row in the conference. Something's got to give. That's right, Trey. And it's just not the WAC championship. It's the last WAC championship. And it's also about bowl position. Both these teams want to play in better bowls. Reps are here. But it's also always, always, always about recruiting. Both teams are going to new conferences next year. Well, Tech is a very high-powered offense, one of the best in the country. Colby Cameron, most efficient passer. Kenneth Dixon, a great freshman at running back. Well, Kenneth Dixon is just unbelievable. He's a workhorse for this team. Not play the whole season, but he's got 24 touchdowns. And on the other side, Colby Cameron, he has thrown over 400 passes without an interception. 27 touchdowns. They are a scoring machine. The Aggies may have an answer, though, on the other side. Maybe the best D in school history. Dave Aranda, defensive coordinator, and free safety McKay Brady lead the way. McKay Brady is going to direct this team out there on the field. He is their leading tackler. He's a very experienced player, smart, heady player. And Dave Aranda, it's, it's all about football, defensive football, 101, assignment, alignment, tackling and getting off of the ball for 90 plus snaps an intriguing chess match on the gridiron here absolutely we got a great venue here today aggies and the bulldogs last year it was a seven point win for the visitors tech trying to do it at home senior day in ruston wax supremacy national rankings on the line Game atmosphere here at Joe IA Stadium. The WAC lead on the line. Utah State and Louisiana Tech squaring off both 4-0 in conference play. It's been a remarkable job by Gary Anderson in Aggieville. Five seasons, four at Utah State. He's 13-3 in his last 16 games. And they have their first eight-win season at the school since 1974, hoping for a big bowl this year. On the other sideline, Sonny Dykes, he says, we went out, we've got a shot at a BCS Bowl, 10 bowls in 16 years as a head coach and an assistant, and they're ranked for the first time since 1999, looking to defend their WAC championship. Ideal weather conditions, sunny to start, then we'll hit some nighttime football. We couldn't ask for a better day in north central Louisiana. Louisiana Tech and Utah State, the Aggies winning the toss. They defer to the second half, so we're going to see the offense and Colby Cameron to get things started here. Excited about seeing this guy play. I look at this quarterback. I see a guy that has some big-time potential, pro bowl ability, pro type ability. He has a strong arm, but what he is mostly is unselfish. He will throw the ball away if it's not there. He has a great vision for the entire field. He can go from one side to the other side. And he's got a running game, and he's got a very fine offensive line tray, which we'll talk a little bit about later. DJ Banks, the two-lane transfer, dangerous threat as receiver and returner. And Utah State will kick it away as Jerron Bentrude, the sophomore from Draper, Utah, has it teed up. Something's got to give. Ten straight wins in conference play for Louisiana Tech, nine for Utah State. Both teams are headed to bowls. Who will be WAC champion this game? The winner grabs a share of the WAC title. We're underway from Ruston. Banks from the two. He's 30. dangerous. And he's out of bounds near midfield as a kicker. Ben Trude runs him out. Great start on special teams for the home team. Incredible. That's what we say about this DJ Banks. He is fast. One cut and out to the sideline. I tell you what, what a great way to start for La Tech. Here's the Davy O'Brien semifinalist, Colby Cameron. He's up for the Walter Camp Award. FBS record 419 without an interception. Look at the numbers. They are just fantastic. <laughs> How does a guy throw 400 plus balls without an interception? Incredible. They love his unselfishness. He's a guy that took over mid-year last year, was vital in that uh, win at Utah State a year ago. They've been awesome since then. I'll play fake on first down. He wants Patton, and it's incomplete down the near sideline. Will Davis, the corner, on the coverage. That is going to be a great competition all day today. 
Let's talk about our impact players on both sides. Kerwin Williams and this guy, Quentin Patton. I tell you, Kerwin Williams, he is one fantastic guy. He's got over 2,000 career. Uh, Kerwin Williams, the running back for Utah State, who we have not seen yet, he has got 2,000 career yards and 35, intercept, 35 receptions. They can both make big plays at key moments. Second down, Cameron to the sideline. Miles White with the catch and bumped out of bounds after a four-yard pickup to midfield. It'll bring up a third down from there. Cameron, of course, has got a host of receivers to throw to. Miles White, Quinton Patton, Richie Casey, uh, you name him. Hunter Lee, he's got a number of guys he can throw that ball to. And of course, 15 different has scored a touchdown. That's amazing. That is pro. No huddle. They'll be going fast. Trey knows better than I do. They are uh, high octane as they'll go with a five receiver look and empty the backfield. Both teams will show multiple sets. Empty at this point. They'll get in some big bone, little bone. From midfield, they roll out Cameron looking for a receiver, tries to thread the needle, and it's incomplete. Dangerous pass as it was intended for David Grew, broken up by Terrence Alston, the nickelback. They're going to play multiple defensive personnel groups out there when they can, Trey. And they got into a different personnel grouping with the nickel defense out there on that third long because they went out of bounds. He had time. So a big stop for the Utah State defense, who has been excellent throughout the course of the year, especially in the first quarter. Twin safeties back to receive the punt from Ryan Allen, the Ray Guy Award winner. Hangs it up there. Fair catch called for and made at the 14-yard line by Cameron Webb. So the Aggies get their first look at their offense here in Ruston. And Gary Anderson has to be pleased that they slowed down the nation's second scoring team. Absolutely. Got off the field after a great field position with the kickoff return. They now have an opportunity to move the ball themselves, and they are pretty good on offense as well. Speaking of that, Kerwin Williams, the running back, who's had a fantastic year. Only 5'8", 189 pounds. But his speed, he's got he's, he's a great inside runner. He can flex out and catch the ball, too. Standing right next to Chucky Keaton to his right as he moved in motion. Keaton will go to work on first down, sets up the screen. There is Williams, 20, gets a block, he's loose. Kerwin Williams, open field. Trying to chase him down is Dave Clark. He's not going to get there. He's gone. He goes the distance, 86 yards, and the Aggies are on the board. And we're going to see how La Tech will respond to this. But, of course, we've all seen them play. You've seen them more than I have. I've watched them on tape. They always respond. It's not just a question of whether they always do. But that's a great way to get started with the fake screen one way, come back the other way, the Kerwin Williams, and he takes it the distance. He's a big play guy. You can't worry about him just in the run game. That's his fourth touchdown catch. He averages 50 yards receiving per game and the nation's active leader at all-purpose yards. It's his team off to a flying start here. Nick Diaz for the extra point. 7-0 Utah State. They've had some big drives, big plays this season. That'll go down as one of the biggest. 86 yards, and the visitors from Logan have a 7-0 lead. Our touchdown catch off of a screen play, getting the Aggies on the board. Over 1,000 rushing, over 500 receiving this year. Great start for Utah State. No question about it, but remember once again, La Tech has been behind several times this year, behind against Virginia, behind 27-0 to Texas A&M. See how they respond. Banks out of the end zone. Good coverage on special teams for Utah State. And they bottle them up and drop them near the 13-yard line. Tech hasn't had a lot of adversity, but if any team can erase a deficit, it's this Louisiana Tech team with Colby Cameron. They're number two in FBS, averaging over 53 points. And he has had some sensational games, but with the up-tempo, the fact he has not thrown a pick, it's mind-boggling. It really is. He, he had an INT on a two-point play. That doesn't count. Nope, not, in the, not on the stat sheets. <laughs> Little swing pass into the hands of Holly, and Ray Holly, who will tag team with Dixon in the running back spot. Good catch and a pick up to the 19 of five yards. He is a fan five yards. He is a fantastic little player that Ray Holly. Both a running back and a wide receiver type. Catches the ball extremely well. Coming off a career game 
He played well against Texas State, 145 on the ground. This time they'll run it to the left side. And not much doing that time for Dixon. Looks like he's a little short of the first down. And now a flag comes in after the play. Looking down here at the fine wide receiver, Quentin Patton. He and Will Davis, their best defensive cornerback, are involved in some kind of tussle. Helmet came off, and we got a flag. We got a personal foul. They'll sort this out here. Robert Cameron, our referee. It's on Patton, and they're going to back him up. Now, if there's been one knock on Coach Dyke's team, they're third most penalized in the FBS level. And, and a lot recently. Uh, they want to, do, to get that cleaned up this week. Now, Will Davis, the cornerback that he's jostled with, he is one of their very finest. So instead of a gain close to a first down, third and 12 coming up for Cameron. Gary Anderson's team has a score. Now his defense in a great spot. Absolutely. Dave Aranda, he wants to pressure in this situation, overload, make the ball come out quick, and I can see him setting up right now. Third and 12 from the 11, and penalty flags are going to blow this play dead. And a procedure. Not only did Quinton Patton pick up a penalty there, his helmet came off, and he was not permitted by the new rules to stay on the field. Now he's coming back on the field. Let's see if he's allowed back after a procedure. White comes off, Patton comes back on, and Coach Dyke's team, he said, we're going to see a lot of different looks from this Gary Anderson scheme, Dave Aranda on defense. Dave Aranda was handed the keys to the car this year, and of course, now we see Patton coming back off. It's not an official play, so they're making him stay out a play. Not a procedure penalty. Third and We're going to see pressures now. here, Trey, on these third and long situations. Make the ball come out quick and then tackle the catch. Coach Dykes wanted an explanation as to why his star receiver could not be out on the field. Third and 17 from the six now. Aggies, chance to get excellent field position if they can get a stop right here. Looking to the sideline. They change play. And the Aggies change defense. Interesting. Little cat and mouse game going on here. And here comes the blitz. From the end zone, Cameron in some trouble, and they've got him. They sack him back at the two yard line. OJ Feely Moyatu finishes the play, but they were coming in from that right side, and they did some damage. They had stemmed from to back into the 3 4, and then they moved into this overload and got some pressure on the quarterback and got him on the ground. Doesn't happen often. Feely Moyatu with his third sack. Kyler Fackrell, the outside linebacker, provided the initial heat there. That's and an eighth sack only, Trey, of Cameron this year. Collins punt returnable from the 48. It's Cameron Webb. And he's finally brought down at the Louisiana Tech 43 yard line. Javante Crow on the tackle. You couldn't ask for a better starter for your Utah State. You get the big play, and then your defense has locked up the Bulldogs on two drives. Absolutely. Good special teams play as well. And now we're looking at a great field position, an opportunity to get another score. Now one thing that the offensive coordinator, Matt Wells, said to us, get in the red zone and score touchdowns. They're not there yet. They intend to get there. This defense, of course, of La Tech has given up a lot of points. The Aggies will go some no huddle. They'll go slow and fast. As you look at Chucky e. Keaton's numbers, a sponge, great leader, a joy to coach. An underrated arm. He's very good in the run game, and here he is on the carry inside the 35, and a first down for Utah State to the Bulldogs' 28-yard line. Fabulous athlete running the option back into the boundary. Has a puller out in front and just keeps himself and picks up big, big yards and a first down. They love the poise, and it's hard to believe Keaton is just a sophomore out of Houston. Last year started eight games, split some time with Adam Kennedy, who's injured this year. It is clearly Keaton's team this year. From the 28. Flag is thrown. Keaton's going to scramble. Puts his head down and gains three yards inside the 25-yard line. 
Let's see what the flag is. It was thrown over here by the linesman. Then I think it's against Utah State. That it's not. It's against La Tech offsides. Wow. So things continue to kind of snowball here. Big Mo is with the Aggies right now. And they have moved into scoring the scoring zone inside that 30-yard line. And this has been the Aggies quarter, John. They've outscored teams 103 to 6 in the first quarter. That's incredible. Their defense has played so lights out in the first half, the last three games, only given up uh, three points. Free receiver look this time. Kerwin Williams to the left of Keaton as they send Reynolds, the receiver in motion. Play fake. Dumps it off to Reynolds inside the 20 and ridden out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Close to the first down. Reynolds, the junior. Antonio Mitchum on the tackle. You know, once again, these, these Aggies have had a bye week to prepare. They've got some tricks up their sleeve. They're playing great on defense right now. A little swap boot with swap boot with the wide receiver coming back behind the line of scrimmage. They'll go quick snap here. Williams on first down and a couple yards to the 15-yard line. They'll like to pick up the tempo a little bit as well, not quite as much as Louisiana Tech. Yeah, they're not as relentless with the snap count as La Tech is, but they will go, they'll morph back and forth with their snap count to keep the defense off balance. Almost four minutes in, a Kerwin Williams 86-yard touchdown catch, and then a stop by the Yankees defense, and they're threatening again. Keaton hands it off to Williams, makes a man miss. Williams inside the 10, puts his head down and has another first down near the five yard line. Mitchum, their leading tackler on the play again, but it's first and goal. The Aggies get back into their fair, favorite personnel grouping, which is 12 personnel, two tight ends, and they're both blocking over there in that, le that left side with a pulling guard out in front of Williams to pick up the first. They love to use those tight ends. They, they love 12 personnel, two tight ends, two wide outs, and Kerwin Williams at the running back position. Double tight ends again, first and goal just outside the five for Utah State. Bartlett, the tight end in motion. Hand off. Williams to the other side, touchdown Utah State. And for Kerwin Williams, his 10th touchdown run of the year, a couple flags thrown in after the play. Not sure exactly what these are. We'll have to wait and see, but that was a beautifully set up. The tight end trade, and then the rain of counter O back to the field to run it in for a touchdown. Let's see what the call is. William the, Williams, the wax active leader in all-purpose yards, off to a tremendous start here in the biggest game of the year. Quite a conference down there to, to get this one figured out. The La Tech defense is almost last in all the categories. I believe we'll crack that block, it looks like, Trey. Oh, is that a costly one? That wipes out that touchdown run. Here it is. Watch the fullback and the pulling guard pull around the edge. I don't see a, any foul play there. Well, Gary it's Anderson, you know, he, he looked dumbfounded that the call was made so late after the play. Those two flags came in. You can't come back in towards the line of scrimmage and block below the waist. But you can going out. Out. Well, and a personal foul tacked on as well. Probably young sportsman like here. What is going on? They go from touchdown to first and 35. That is 30 yards worth of penalties. The crackback block, then the personal foul penalty. Wow. Costly. Costly. Yeah. First and goal now from the 35. Trey, you got to maintain your cool in this game. Keaton zips one, caught by Reynolds. That gets some of that yardage back into field goal range at least to the 26, nine-yard pickup. This is a game with lots of different momentum swings, and you have to be able to handle it. Keaton as poised as they come. They love his ability. Number one in school history completion percentage. Makes all the right decisions, but a lot of real estate to make up here after those penalties. 
Play fake again. In some trouble. He's going to be sacked back at the 35-yard line. Solomon Randall with some help from Malcolm Pichon, the 330-pound tackle. And a great coverage downfield. They tried to slip Kerwin Williams out on the wheel route, and he was covered completely by Mike Strang, who's a former safety playing linebacker in this beat-up linebacking crew of La Tech. Great play by Mike Strang, number 34. Seventh play of this drive, but they're going the other way. From the 33, third and goal. They'd like to at least get some yardage here to set up a field goal attempt. Empty backfield. Keaton's going to run. He's got room. 20, and he spins inside the 15. Great run to the 10. Needed to make the end zone. It'll be fourth down from there, but that shows the elusiveness of number 16. Very athletic, and he has a burst. And he can shake people out there in the open field. He's playing with a lot of confidence right now. He takes that ball down. He knows what he's going to do. He just <laughs> gave the shake to Antonio Mitchum and never laid a glove on him. So they'll try to get three out of this. Nick Diaz, the second kick to use this year, the sophomore. Yep, 27-yarder. And the kick is no good. So Diaz now five of eight on the season. The sophomore cannot convert and a wasted trip for the Aggies. But an opportunity. This game open a little bit, but a costly penalty followed by a costly personal foul, misconduct penalty. I don't know exactly what it was, but I, it, it backed him way up. First and 35, hard to convert those. Let's see if this is where the pendulum swings the other way now. Can the Bulldogs respond on offense? They'll run it with Dixon off the right side, and he creates some space with Holly in front and picks up six yards. And here they go quick up to the line. They love to keep you on your heels. It makes it very hard for the, the defense to get lined up and play. Two running back look, hand off to Dixon again, same play across the 30, and they move the chains. Something we talked about uh, prior to the game and, and during the week with the coaching staff, they like to repeat plays, and they love to run the ball towards the La Tech sideline, making it very difficult for Utah State to substitute. Too far to go. This is a team that averages 244 per game on the ground. They're not just a passing team, very good in the run game. Holly, though, bottled up this time and dropped for a loss. Nice play by Kyler Fackrell, who Coach Anderson thinks should be a freshman All-American. I, I re he really caught my attention watching him on tape. Very athletic for a big man. 6'5", 236 pounds, redshirt freshman, only going to get better. Very, very athletic. Good cover guy as well. Loss of two, second and 12 now from the 30 as we approach the seven-minute mark here in the first quarter. Play fake for Cameron. Downfield for White. He can't hang on. That might have been deflected near the 45-yard line. Evan Lawson, number one, may have gotten a hand on that ball or at least impeded the vision of the wide receiver out there. Miles White. He distracted him, if nothing else. Absolutely. Now and here we are faced with third and long again. Now Utah State can dictate. They have things they call creepers, finding a way to bring four guys in on the blitz. You can see them bunched. Near the top of the formation, and we have a penalty flag. A couple of them. We've got some procedure. The center for the La Tech, Stephen Warner, he runs this offensive line. He calls out Cadence. He looks around to call out who is the middle linebacker so they all know which way they're going in terms of protection. But what, what Utah State's done so far is they've moved around and, and made them a little antsy with their pickup in their in their pressures third and 17 now as Cameron will look to the sideline here five receivers three to one side how do the Aggies deal with that how do they counter here they're, they're moving go. people around walking the linebackers out the safeties and here comes a safety blitz both safeties all picked up 
They, they set up the screen for Holly, and that is defended well. And that's about as well as you can play defense on a third and long. They blitz, and they still have the cover guys here. They had the people available. They knew the ball is going to come out quick. Cameron saw it coming because they're coming from deep center field. Both safeties coming downhill. It got picked up extremely well. He's got to understand that, but he dumped the ball out there fairly quickly. And, the, and Utah State basically got what they wanted. And the Aggies are going to get the football back as we roll towards the seven-minute mark here. Penalty flag is down as Allen gets the punt away. Webb calls for a fair catch, makes it at the 14. We'll sort the flag out. I'll be in offsides against Utah State's punt return team. And they may just back it up. It was a great punt. They may just tack on the five yards at the end to back them up from the 15 to the 10-yard line. They had a fourth and 10, so it would not pick up the first down on this drive. 54 yards on that punt from Allen, who might be the nation's best punter. Oh, Trey, he's got a big leg. Distance and hang time. And we'll get the call here from Robert Cameron momentarily. We find the ball and keep the football. Utah State has shut down Tech on three straight guys. Every team can say that. This is the nation's second best scoring team. It's amazing what they've done. That is absolutely true, Trey. I'm not sure how they're doing it so far, but they are playing very disciplined and very active. Seven. A share of the WAC championship is on the line, and the visitors from Utah State looking very impressive. Coach Anderson says they have that confidence this season. They believe they'll win. The experience of beating Utah, the close losses to Wisconsin and BYU have helped. They're playing with all kinds of confidence, and here's Keaton on the keeper on first down, and he runs out of bounds near the 20, pickup of six yards. They've played on the big stage. They just don't have the WAC championship, and they won it this year. Absolutely they do. And they're showing La Tech a bunch of different looks. That was empty back, though, with four wide receivers setting a triangle look or a diamond look out to the right. He just took it down. It's a quarterback draw all the way. Dave Clark, the fifth-year senior, finally runs Keaton out of bounds. Sophomore with a second down and two. Play fake over the middle. Low throw, but it's hauled in. Great catch made. And that is the freshman, I believe. No, it's Chuck Jacobs, the senior out of Richmond, California. They went low to get it. He throws a dart down low, knee level. Terrific concentration by Jacobs to pull that ball in. 20-yard pickup, first down at the 42. Keaton to the far sideline and through the hands of Webb incomplete. In that sunny area, you wonder if it affected him on that throw. Once again, Utah State going fast themselves, and you see La Tech shipping personnel defensively in and out to try to keep fresh people out there and stay in this ballgame. This is one thing that La Tech has struggled with is defensive personnel having the numbers to hang in a game like this themselves. And the Aggies have the ability to break open the big play. They sent Joe Hill in motion, fake to him. Keaton rolling left, tough throw to make, it's incomplete. Wanted Reynolds on the near side. Good pressure that put on by uh, Kevin Kissenberg. And now it's third and 10. Hey, you know, the Bulldogs have given up a lot of yards this year, but they have been able to turn people over. Here's yeah. an opportunity. They, they have gotten turnovers. They really have nine interceptions and 15 fumbles. It's been what they've done best on defense. Let's see what happens here. Keaton has some time. Throws on the move, and he delivers the pass for the catch. Kerwin Williams at the 45-yard line. Great patience from the sophomore QB. And, and, and Trey, that's just about too much time for, for Chucky Keaton. He just he, he had way too much time to find an open receiver. You cannot hold coverage for that long. Underrated arm. Matt Wells, the offensive coordinator, says, I don't know why people don't talk about his arm enough. They talk about his running ability, but he is very good in the passing game. Williams shifts in motion. 
Keaton fakes the screen, goes to the other side on the screen, and that's well read by Louisiana Tech. Trang was over there, Pichon as well, shutting down Jacobs. Outstanding play on the setting the double screen, running back to the offensive that's left and throwing the, the wide receiver tunnel screen, coming back in there, terrific tackle. The only score in the game, an 86-yard touchdown catch. As you look at Tommy Spangler on the Tech sideline, the defensive coordinator. Been scrambling all year with personnel. Who's practicing, who's playing, who's on the bus? Here's Williams straight ahead on the carry. And he's down to the 36-yard line. He is not a big kid, but they love his low center of gravity. Absolutely, he's, they call him a one-cut guy in the middle of the line of scrimmage. Makes one cut, doesn't dance, gets up there, finds a way, and goes, gets north-south. Picks up positive yards. Third, third and two now. Williams, a durable leader. Unselfish, took a back seat to Robert Turbin, who's in the NFL last year. They go with a four-receiver look this time. A couple tight ends are split out. Bartlett and Tialavea. Williams. Trying to stretch to the outside. He does not get there. Great pursuit, Chad Boyd, with some help from Dave Clark. Fourth down coming up. Stringing out that sweep to the defensive right all the way to the sideline. Terrific play. Everybody stay in square. Pursuit, force, fill, pursuit. Just how you draw it up on the blackboard. You gotta force it, you gotta have a one man side filling it, and you get all the pursuit players coming to the rescue. They're four for eight on fourth down this season. They'll go for it. Fourth and one. Ninth play of the drive. Option. Keaton. He's got it. And he's down to the 32 yard line. Four yard pickup. Utah, Backs his way in there. Utah State didn't come here to play tie ball. They came here to win a football game. Go for it in fourth and one out here in, in positive territory. Keaton has had some big games against Utah, 216 yards, couple touchdowns. He had a big scramble to set up the game-winning touchdown against the rivals, and he has his team really moving the ball well. If not for those penalties in the last drive, almost perfect. Absolutely. Can't draw it up any better, except for those penalties, and they'll kill you. You can't have that happen. From the 32, late stages, first quarter. The Aggies have dominated thus far. And now a timeout. They're going to talk it over here. And Gary Anderson, and it was so interesting talking to their staff. Of course, Anderson comes from a defensive background, but they're a dynamic offense, and people probably don't talk about their offense enough. Uh, absolutely, and talking with Matt Wells, the offensive coordinator, he's got so much confidence in what he's doing in the personnel groups that they're using. They're basically in uh, three wides and one tight end and one back, or two tight ends, two wides and one back, and they like to split people out and make different match, get, create different matchups for the defense. Well, we talked about it at the outset. This is for a share of the WAC title. The winner here has a leg up with one game to go following this in the regular season. Utah State hosts Idaho. Louisiana Tech has to go to San Jose State. Utah State would be in a great spot to win the outright, outright whack title with a win today. And like I say, the, you know, we've got bowl representatives here today, Independence Bowl. Uh, we've, got the, uh, we've got the Orange Bowl rep here. There's some bowl people here watching both these teams. After the timeout, Keaton back at the helm, 180 yards of total offense already for the sophomore quarterback. Pressure. Scrambling. The there he goes. 25, and he's tackled. Nice play by Dave Clark. And there's a late penalty flag coming in after the play. The problem here is you make a great coverage, but you can't cover the quarterback on the scramble. Seven yard pickup. But after the play. First of foul in Utah State. They're second here in the first quarter. Happened after the tackle and called absolutely correctly by the officials. And that was Cameron Webb, their senior receiver. And again, that backs him out of field goal range again. You know, when you have that happen to a younger player, that's one thing. But when you see a... 
a senior player, a guy that has experience, he's just jacked up. <laughs> you know, you've got to pull off. See what you hit. See where the ball carrier is. Second and 18. Keaton has a man open underneath. Going to roll and throw. Delivers a pass for a first down catch by Reynolds at the 20-yard line. Travis Reynolds hung on. He took quite a shot. 20-yard pickup. That trait is about the fourth option that he had. That was once again one of the swap boots where it had an underneath receiver, a, a secondary, deep, intermediate receiver, and then he hit the very That's backside the deep receiver. Terrific look by the quarterback. He's been a glue guy. Reynolds, dependable receiver, took quite a shot, though, from redshirt freshman corner Bryce Abraham. First down, though, at the 21. Williams in motion. Keaton has time. And he just throws that one away. They love that about him. That You know, if it's not there, don't force anything. That's smart football. He's outside the pocket. That's having some football savvy about you as a quarterback, as a young quarterback. Outside the pocket, throw it away. There's, it's not there. Very, very smart. That saves the down. It doesn't save the down. It saves a bad play. Never heard an offensive coordinator so excited about talking about how his guy throws it into the seat, though. So. <laughs> That is a true statement there. But the numbers don't lie. 23 touchdowns, seven picks. He has been big in big time situations. Second down, option game now. Williams between the tackles, short yardage to the 18 for three. Third and long from there. Utah State once again in the two tight end offense lined up in an unbalanced formation which forces the defense to move and forces the defense to think. Linebackers and safeties making adjustments. They did a pretty good job there on second and ten, and now it's third and long. In the red zone, they want touchdowns here rather than field goals. Of course, I've already missed one of those. One for three on third down. Tech showing blitz. Here they come. Keaton underneath. Catch made, first down grab inside the five-yard line, hauled in by Matt Austin, their sixth-year senior, and he moves the chains. Big catch by, by Austin. Big target, six foot two. He's got 35 receptions, gets that ball off just as he is about to get leveled by Vontae Terry Dora. Monterius Dora. Well, Vander Liggins, a sophomore corner, tackles him, but it's a first and goal. They're back in scoring territory here. Late in the first quarter. Bartlett, the tight end in motion again. Handoff, Williams running to the right side, tries to cut it back a couple yards, then he runs into three red hats. Not a lot doing there. Malcolm Pichon in the middle bottles it up. Ran the same play that they had run for a touchdown, which they got penalized on before, which is the counter O with the tight end leading on the backside. They are a team that doesn't run a whole lot of plays, just like La Tech, but they run them effectively. Bunch set this time. They roll out. Keaton throws back in the end zone, wide open. Touchdown, Kellen Bartlett. He 13 does, nothing. He does so many things for him for, for Utah State. He is a pass receiver. He is a blocker. He's a grinder. He's a tough, smart football player. He crossed from all the way from the backside to get deep. And Keaton throws a strike. No coverage there, folks. All-conference candidate and the fifth-year senior from Blue Springs, Missouri, caps off a 16-play, 86-yard drive. Six minutes off the clock as Diaz is on for the PAT. 14-0 Utah State. Utah State coming out looking impressive offensively, played well defensively. Right now, La Tech, you've got to regroup. Once again, they've been in these positions before. They know how to do it. They stay off the panic button. You know, this is, remember, we have to remind fans who have not followed Louisiana Tech this year. This is a 9-1 football team. Sonny Dykes, their second in the nation in scoring behind only Oregon. They came within a whisker beating A&M, the team that beat Alabama. You could say this is their toughest test of the year. At least what they've run into here in the first quarter. It looks that way, no question. And the thing about them, too, is they, they run 90-plus plays per game and half the games that they play. But when Utah State controls the football like they did for the last 16 plays, it's hard to run 90 plays. Sonny Dykes has done a tremendous job. It's been a record-breaking season. But Utah State 
has done the job here in the first quarter, dominating on both sides. Ben Trude's kick, returned by Banks, 20. And he's gang tackled at the 26 yard line. On special teams, Utah State has done a nice job as well. Mikel Aquanco, the freshman from Chandler, Arizona was there. So Cameron, this has to be new for him. They have bottled up this offense. What do you do when you've been doing things so well all year long? Well, he's going to switch things around right now, go back to that inverted big bone, and probably try to put a sustain a drive. Let's do what we do best. And part of that's running this guy right here. Dixon, physical back, spins out of a tackle and up to the 35-yard line, pickup of eight. He is strong at six foot and 215. The one thing, too, about this La Tech offense, Trey, is that they don't have a, a lot of big plays for touchdowns. They have a lot of big plays. I have a huge amount. I can't even count them all. But they can grind the ball, too. They can control the football. And here's a flea flicker. Back to Cameron downfield for Patton, and it's incomplete. Couple penalty flags, and this is probably going against the Aggies. This will be for holding Patton. The old flea flicker, always good once or twice a year. Clearly a hold, probably saved a touchdown for Utah State by grabbing Patton on the way down. They set up that play well, John. They, they showed that bone formation with three running backs and fooled them. One thing about Peyton Patton, you better know where he's at. This guy's got 83 catches. And I know this, Will Davis, the cornerback out there, who's got three interceptions, leads the team in that category. He's number one in, in the whack as far as passes defensed. He is going to be all over Quentin Patton all day long. And that time, he just had to pull him down. General will get a breather on the sidelines. First down after the penalty at the 45. Hand off to Ray Holly. Cuts it back and up close to midfield. As the tackle is made by the inside linebacker, Jake Dowdy. This kid's small in stature, but runs hard. I think Holly is a very, very complete back. He started as a wide receiver this, this preseason, and then due to some injuries at the running back position, mostly losing Tevin King, they put him back at running back where he's so comfortable. Louisiana Tech has some work to do, but they're on the march at the midfield stripe. The WAC championship on the line. One quarter in the books. It's been the big plays of Utah State thus far. Williams and Bartlett with score. Louisiana Tech has their highest ranking ever, 19th. They're 20th in the FBS polls, or the BCS polls, and hoping for a BCS bowl if they finish in the top 16. But it has been Utah State thus far dominating. In terms of total yardage, 245 for the Aggies, 40 for Cameron and Tech. They do have the football at midfield as we start the second quarter. It's been a very interesting first quarter, very much dominated by Utah State. A long, long ways to go with this outfit, though. Second and six for the home team from midfield. Play fake for Cameron, has some time, throws near the stick, catch made by Patton. And then he's gang tackled. Let's see where they mark the forward progress. It'll be close to that first down at the 45. This is a matchup that all day we have to watch. This Will Davis cornerback for Utah State versus Patton, who is a very fine player. You know, Patton really put the uh, Bulldogs on his back in that game against Texas A&M. Yards after catch are so big with him. Third and short. He'll easily pick up the first down on the carry by Dixon, who puts his head down, and he's to the 37-yard line pickup of eight yards. He had a clear path to the perimeter. Good blocking up front. <laughs> 232, six touchdowns against Idaho. Now they throw it to him out of the backfield. That could have been a lateral, and they will mark it a lateral, and that's a loss. Back to the 41-yard line. And quickly, Utah State brings in fresh personnel because they ran or passed the football towards their sideline. That's how they got it. That's their system of substitution today. They mesh some 3-4, some nickels, a specific sub plan that you talked about, though. And now it's second and 15 for Louisiana Tech. And this is a quarterback keeper called all the way, it appeared, as Cameron... Takes it down to the 35, third down from there, and nine. 
And they'll hurry up again. It's a quarterback power. The La Tech has been playing with six offensive linemen up front. They're one for four on third downs. Third and nine here. And a passing situation that actually favors Utah State, you would think. Absolutely. There's going to be pressure here. Rolling left, Cameron. He has some pressure on him. He has to throw it away. Tavares McMillan, the linebacker, caused that quick throw. And it's fourth down. And here are two more late flags coming in. This game has really gotten out of hand after a play ends in a dead ball situation. And, and the, the referees are doing a great job trying to control it here. Once again, it, 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 it seems like it's surrounding a secondary player. This time, Nevin Lawson. It's emotional. There's a lot on the line here in the WAC championship, but this is something that usually affects Tech, not Utah State this season. Wow. You know, not even close to where the play is. The point of attack is all the way over here on the La Tech sideline, and you get some play back there made by a a secondary player. It's just not smart football. Well, that keeps the drive alive for Sonny Dykes and company now. First down at the 20. Here's that bone formation again. Three running backs with Dixon behind Cameron. Hand off Dixon. Straight ahead and he's hit right at the line of scrimmage. Up front that was Jordan Nielsen, their redshirt freshman in. That's the big people in there. The big bone with the two big tight ends. Number 99, actually, a defensive tackle at one point. Second and nine, same look with the three running backs. Patton is split top of the screen. Cameron looking to throw it for Patton in the end zone. Incomplete. They say out of bounds. Brady was back there. He was double covered. They say he did not get his foot down. He can flash. Great. He is the one that saved the play there. I thought he might go for the interception, but he goes for the big hit, and it's judged by the referee. Is he forced out? Oh, he hits, hit the pylon. He hit the pylon with his leg. Of course, we might see a review right here. Now it doesn't look like it. If you hit the pylon with your leg and the ball is over the goal line, that should be a touchdown. You're still gonna you got to have the, the foot down in bounds. Third down now. They don't review it. Cameron near sideline. And that's out of bounds. So fourth down coming up. They tried to stretch it to one side to Patton and then to the other side to Giot and come up empty. Utah State, number one in the WAC in red zone defense. And touchdowns allowed number one and they just come up with a big win right there well here's a guy that normally has been consistent but going through an adventure right now matt nelson he's missed five of his last six did not attempt a field goal last week in their big win this one from 36 yards out from the right hash nelson trying to get tech on the board and he does he is back that's a confidence builder right there so the senior Gets three for Louisiana Tech. 14-3, Utah State in front. Sonny Dykes face his team getting their first points on a Matt Nelson field goal here early in the second quarter. Utah State with an 11-point lead. The WAC championship on the line. Winner grabs a share of the title with one week to go following this one. Kickoff by Nelson to Jacobs and he's hammered at the 15 yard line. That was Quinn Giles that blew that play up. And it's funny how momentum, even off of a field goal, there's a little bit of momentum now pushing the home team side. No question about it, but penalties is what's holding Utah State back. You know, I've been involved in a few games as a player in college and in the NFL where emotion is high, but you cannot let it get the best of you to, to create bad penalties against your team. In a dead ball situation, that's what's got to drive a coach crazy. Two or three of them, Trey, you're right. Absolutely. 14-3, the Aggies have dominated on a statistical front, 245-56 to 56 in terms of total yardage. 
And he could have more than 14 on the board, though. Keaton, handoff. Joe Hill, who came in motion, gets the handoff, and he carries it for four yards to the 20. He's been a pleasant surprise. Sophomore out of Fullerton, California. Spells Curly Williams from time to time. Keaton has been very good. Leading the way, 9 of 12 through the air. Six carries, 50 yards as they look at a second and six now. Changing it up at the line. Deep drop off the play fake. Keaton going to scramble with it now. Here he is in the open field. First down to the 30, and he runs out of bounds. What an added weapon to have in your offense. No question about it. Great coverage by La Tech in the back end. Linebackers, safeties, corners, all doing a great job. But what they don't have is a pass rush and somebody covering the middle of the field. One of those defensive tackles is going to take up the slack so he can't rush right up the gut. First down to the 31. Keaton has four touchdowns on the ground from that quarterback spot. Hands it off to Williams, trying to stretch it to the outside, makes Boyd miss. He's to the 40, and a first down out of bounds near the 45-yard line. He gets the corner turned, look out. They're lucky they had a body over there. Kerr Williams has speed to get to the perimeter, outruns the corner in the safe part, finally gets taken down after a big game. The nickel back, Javante Crow got a piece of him. First down from the 44, Keaton scrambling. Throws it away. Live to play another down. Absolutely. Both quarterbacks do it well. Keaton, the youngster. Just a sophomore, true sophomore. Got seven interceptions on the year, but getting better, according to offensive coordinator Matt Wells. Just getting better. And that's a good sign. He had 316 yards, four touchdown passes against Texas State last week. Second and ten, couple running backs, Williams and Hill next to him. Going to put it in the air again. It's Austin at midfield, and he spins close to the first down. Schrang, the outside linebacker on the tackle with help from Abraham, the corner. That ball is thrown from the far hash. That is a frozen rope. Austin, who's overcome a pair of season-ending knee injuries. Gets him within a yard of that first down. Third and one at the 47. Unbalanced line. High set. They shift the guy in motion. Option keeper Keaton, and he's close. He needed the 46, and I don't know. Tackle made by Vontarius Dora, the left end. Trey, I don't think he's got it. And Coach Anderson will have another test right here. See where they mark this thing. It looks like it is shy, and they're going to bring the punt team out there on fourth down and less than a yard. A, a smart play. Right now, you're, you're out in front. Your offense is playing well. Your defense is playing lights out again. Field position. Big stop for the Bulldogs defense as DJ Banks awaits the punt from Tyler Bennett. He's put 24 inside the 20 this year. Hangs this one up there. Fair catch made at the 14. And that's the 25th punt he's put inside the 20-yard line. 9.37 to go. The Tech defense does their job. Gary Anderson's defense back out onto the field. His team up 11. Bulldogs trying to make the adjustments against a top-10 defense. Utah State has dominated this first half. Tech has just a field goal thus far. They have the football back at the 15 as they start this drive. Hand off to Ray Holly across the 20. First down carry to the 28 yard line. You mentioned Holly seizing the opportunity when Tevin King went down. He runs so hard. Runs hard, has, has great ability to catch the football. He is quick. He's got a terrific burst. Utah State playing with three linemen. Sometimes they're gonna have to walk those linebackers up. Same play, Holly again off the left side for nine yards. Repeating plays into the boundary. La Tech continues to grind. Holly with 145 against Texas State, 139 on the ground on 22 carries against UNLV. He can be a workhorse. Second and one. Here he is again. 
Right side, first down, 43. Moving the pile near the 45-yard line for seven more yards. And here, when they run the football over towards the Utah State, they make a big, massive personnel change. They're trying to stay fresh because La Tech does a terrific job of wearing defenses down. And they quickly get up the line here. Split backs this time for Cameron. Hand off to Dixon right side. And he's hit at the 49 and dropped on a good tackle by Jake Dowdy. Still four yards on that carry. Here comes that tempo now. They've got it into their rhythm. Things are going their way. They're feeling better. Hey, we got a very close game. It could have been a bigger score, as we know, as we've already described. But this is what La Tech does. And now we have penalty flags as Cameron was ready to roll out and throw it, but motion, it appears, against Tech. This is a little unusual for these procedure penalties for, for La Tech. This offensive line is really very well coached by P.D. Perot, uh, a former teammate of mine with the Philadelphia Eagles. Great offensive line for eight years in the NFL. He's been here for three decades, over three decades at La Tech. Fifth penalty against the Bulldogs. Cameron on a play fake over the middle. He got the catch and a first down to the 38-yard line. A strike and a pickup of 17. There you see the accuracy of Cameron. Just throws the dart. It's a second or possibly third read back to the boundary. And here they go, quick snap with Dixon off the right side for a couple yards. Lasique on the tackle, their linemen, and they shuttle people off and on now. Close to the sideline, make a, make a defensive line change. They want to play eight defensive linemen today. Not many teams across the country can do that. But they feel good about doing it with their guys. And Holly back on, Dixon on the sideline now. Fake to Hunter Lee, Cameron to the air, he wants Miles White. There's the penalty flag. They're going to get Will Davis hand-checking him down inside the 10-yard line. Terrific play fake by Cameron. Pulled everybody up. Linebackers and secondary all pulled up. Good oh. call by the referees. Sixth penalty against Utah State. They have had some costly ones. This one for 15 yards. Jostling downfield, trying to catch up, play catch up. Cost them another first down. And look where La Tech is already. Bulldogs entering that red zone where they have 57 touchdowns this year. They were held to a field goal last time. Here's Holly to the outside, cuts it back to the 15 and slung down at the 13-yard line. Six more yards. For Ray Holly, he's been instrumental. I tell you, that guy must be a great dancer. He is not a one-cut Charlie. He is all <laughs> over the place with his feet. Maybe not Gale Sayers, but pretty good. Oh eight my eight plays now on this drive. He's got some feet. Wow. Second and three now. Straight ahead on the carry. Close to the first down is Hunter Lee. And he'll set up a third and short from there. This is a guy that was a running back last year. Moved the receiver because they wanted to get their best players on the field. He can do both things very well. It is a first down. La Tech grinding away here. Dave Miranda's defense trying to dig in. Here's a handoff to Hunter Lee again. A flag is thrown as he's drilled in the backfield. Jake Downey was in there on the tackle. Left tackle, Oscar Johnson at the point of attack. Those are the ones get called most frequently because they're very easily seen. Well, that, that hurts. Uh, the offense, you're down near the 10-yard line, backed up outside the 20 now. First down and 20 from the 21. Empty backfield this time for Cameron. Looking left side. Lobs it in there. Was it caught? Banks at the 10. They say no. He did not come up with it at the 10-yard line. 
You got two different referees. The line judge is saying one thing, umpire saying another. And it looks like it's going to be overruled. They call it a trap there at the 10 yard line by Banks. Another look. Looks like that ball's moving a little bit there, John. Yep. Good call. Second and 20 now. Well, this would be a big stand for that Utah State D to hold him to another field goal. Remember, one of the most impressive offenses in college football this season with the numbers they put up. I remember talking with Dave Aranda. He was talking about some movie getting into a, some house with some going through different doors. To me, it's like the, the old movie The Exorcist. I mean, you just, you're just trying to breathe. Now we have a delay of game penalty against Louisiana Tech where they caught off guard here. Of different penalties called today that I haven't seen in quite some time. And I would think that with La Tech, the way they run their offense, they should never have a, a problem with, with the clock. Now it's second and 25 from the 26 yard line. Everybody looks to the sideline, defense included, over towards Dave Aranda to pick up another signal. They're walking around up there on defense. One down lineman. Cameron. Backside pressure, fires for the corner, and incomplete intended for Patton inside the 10-yard line. Now it's third down. Good pressure put on by Zach Bigel. They are in a lot of different fronts. People might call that the amoeba defense, just walking around, creating problems for the offensive line and protections. 11th play of this drive, third and 25 from the 26. They're starting to move out of Matt Nelson's field goal range, going the other way. They rush three on Cameron. Backside pressure now, throws for Patton, and it's incomplete. Looked like he was going to haul it in at the three, and that was broken up by Nevin Lawson. Nice play by the junior quarter. A great job taking Passing down incomplete. the front side arm of Patton with his backside right arm. Watch him not swat it away right there. That is finishing the play. Lawson, a confident guy. He wants the top wide receiver week in, week out, and he stood tall there against number four. So Nelson comes out there. He's already converted from 36. This will be a bit of a challenge. 43 yards middle of the field. It's blocked. And they can return this. It's into the hands of Davis. And he's inside the 45-yard line. A blocked kick for Utah State. They have blocked six of them this season on special teams. I tell you, it, this looks like a low kick coming out. And once again, once a, a, a longer field goal, that's the danger. Pretty good penetration, and the kick is a little bit low. But that was what Utah State was trying to prevent a, on a long kick. Penetrate inside. Don't try to come off the edge. And that was Jordan Nielsen at 6'5". Another guy Coach Anderson thinks could be a freshman All-America guy. Absolutely. Big, tall player. Great rush by the Aggies. Big play. And great field position after the Davis return off the block kick. Keaton will go to work. Play action. Setting up the screen. Williams has blockers in front. Williams to the 30, to the edge, and he runs out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. That was very well conceived. Very well thought out, especially in this situation after a sudden change, come back with either a home run shot or the screen. The defenders are anxious to go make a play themselves. They're a little upset after the, the block, a kick. Get him, catch him with a screen. Williams has over 100 yards receiving. First down inside the 25. Now they'll hand it off this time to number 25, and they bottle him up a yard or two. Boyd was there, and also Shaquille Lucas, the junior defensive tackle. Chad Boyd, Jamel Johnson, those are two very active safeties. They've made a lot of tackles. Boyd being the fourth leading tackler, Jamel Johnson, number 20, being the second leading tackle on this team. You don't like to see your safeties making all the tackles. One yard pickup, already over 300 yards total offense for Utah State as they're again nearing the red zone. 
Keaton has the play call. He has Austin and Reynolds split top of the screen. Williams in the backfield. Going to scramble. And he slides down inside the 20-yard line. He is the extra player. It's like playing with 12 guys with Keaton right now. This defense did a terrific job once again defending the pass, but they don't have the athletes or enough of them up front right now to press the pocket and keep the quarterback inside. This is their third trip into the red zone. They're one out of two. They have the touchdown and the missed field goal, third and six. Jacobs in motion. Keaton standing in there, pressured out of there. Looking to make a play on the run. Back of the end zone, Reynolds can't hang on. <laughs> wow, what a play. This guy can move. And you've got to, on scramble situations, the old word is you've got to plaster your coverage. They turned one loose. Well, and that's a catch that Reynolds had a crack at there. He had it right in his bread basket. Couldn't hang on. When when receivers are downfield and the quarterback is loose, you got to stick with your guy. you got to plaster your coverage. Get on your guy and stay with him the entire way. They let Reynolds loose. It could have been an easily a touchdown. Fourth down coming up with four minutes to go here in the first half. And now Robert Cameron having a discussion with uh, Sonny Dykes here on the near side. What's that about? There's a flag. It was on Austin of Utah State. Don't see a yellow hanky anywhere, but there was a penalty against Austin declined by Tech, so they'll bring the field goal team out there. So Nick Diaz, who's already missed once today, will attempt this one from 38. Does he have enough? He does, right down the middle, and the Aggies get three out of it, and they now lead 17-3. Nick Diaz, a sophomore from Redondo Beach, California, gets three for the visitors, up by a couple touchdowns. The nation's top offense has been held in check. Just 120 total yards for Louisiana Tech. They average 577 per game. It has been Utah State's D that's been the big story here with a share of the WAC title on the line. Last three games before their bye week, they were playing lights out defense, and they had two weeks to prepare for La Tech. The great point, Ben Schrude's kick to Banks from the five-yard line. DJ Banks across the 25. And then he's gang tackled at the 30-yard line. Tavares McMillan got to him first. 17-3. Utah State has missed some opportunities on offense, but they have to be very pleased with what they've done thus far, though Louisiana Tech is still in this game. Oh, lots of football to be played. And it'll be important for them with 3.47 to go in the half here to put a drive together and go down and score some points. Cameron with... Subpar numbers when you consider what he's done over the course of the year. 71% completion percentage this year. Just 7 of 16 today. Looking to go to the air on first down. And incomplete intended for Quinton Patton. Nevin Lawson on the coverage. You know, with Davis and Lawson, two very good corners. Very tight covering corners that can stay with these speedy receivers of La Tech. La Tech is so, once again, so unselfish. They've got so many guys that are involved in the offense at running back in the wide receiver position. Four receiver look this time. Fakes the handoff. Cameron fires it over the middle for a first down. Underneath to Hunter Lee, the sophomore. Once again, Hunter Lee plays a lot of different positions for them. You've got to be smart. Now, this is supposed to be a simplistic offense. 
let me tell you, it's a little more complicated than that. They're doing a lot of things. Now they're in the, the little bone of the clock. Oh, they're the two backs, 20 personnel. They're going to blow this play dead after that 19-yard catch. They get up to the line and then procedure against Tech. Hunter Lee at halfback. Dixon at halfback. Three wides. Jordan Mills, the right tackle, the guilty party there. They told us, though, Utah State, that uh, Tech has two running plays and six passing plays. <laughs> but a lot of formations, that would fool a lot of people if you told yeah, them that. I, there's, a, there's a little bit more gingerbread than that. Hand off to Hunter Lee, trying to stretch it to the near side. Well pursued by Utah State, and they throw him for a loss. They had linebackers, corners, a lot of people in that vicinity. Loss of three. Trey, that's what I like about this defense. They play so hard. They play so disciplined. They set the edge out there with the safety. Number 21. And turned it back in for the pursuit players. There's McCade Brady, a guy we talked about in the open. Brian Sweet, his strong safety next to him made a nice play. Cameron now pressured. Scrambles with it. And he gets a little bit of yardage back to, to the original line of scrimmage. Tackle by Zach Vigil, third and 11 coming up. Just what Utah State is. They have gotten LaTeX into a number of third and longs, so they can dictate what they do on defense. That was a key, getting them into third downs, but more importantly, third and tough situations, third and long. They're one of seven on third downs today. Cameron throws for the stick. Patton's got it and appears to have the first down. He runs out of bounds right at the 40-yard line. That's a long throw all the way across the field. 15, 18 yards downfield, the, the, the deep out. Great pass protection. They did a great job picking up the loaded front. Excellent pass. You're in the two-minute mark now. First down from the 40-yard line. Tech trying to get some points before the break here. Play action again. Cameron going up top. He wants Banks. Broken up. Nice play made by Will Davis. Running stride for stride. Downfield on the boundary with Banks. Will Davis. Watch him extend for the ball with his head back at the quarterback. Just how you draw it up. Utah straight. Utah State trying to make a massive substitution here after that play on second and ten. They believe Davis is a next-level guy, athletic, physical, and he has been ready for the charge today. Second down for Cameron. Same play. He wants White this time, and he overshoots him. Same play to that corner, and Davis was there both times. This is what LaTeX does so well. And, and once again, Colby Cameron has the ability to connect on these deep balls. They must throw a 1,000 of them in practice. But that time, just slightly overthrown. They're going against... Who against? Davis again. We're going to throw deep on him one time, come right back, throw deep on you again. Just 9 for 21 for Cameron. It's a guy that's had some monster games. He was 34 of 52 against Houston. 31 of 45 last week. Third and long now. He's going to scramble, trying to run for the first down. Cameron's got it inside the 30-yard line. He is a pretty nifty runner himself. He's athletic enough to make a first down, and there's a taste of what Chucky e. Keaton's been doing to the La Tech defense. Great coverage, pulls it down, heads for the edge. Good block there by Quinton Patton, gives it up for the team. They don't ask Cameron to run often, but he's effective when he needs to be. Stops the clock, ninth play of this drive for the Bulldogs. Empty backfield, sprinting to the, the edge there. And the throw is on the money. Short gain into the hands of Holly. Out of bounds to the 25-yard line, four-yard pickup. Holly also a good receiver out of the backfield. He and Dixon, very good in that category. Absolutely. Holly is played wide receiver. He's just a terrific athlete. It's his 29th catch. Second and six at the 25. Cameron. Far side, catch made, R.P. Stewart, and he has a first down as he leans forward to the 16-yard line. Sweet on the tackle. This guy's an interesting guy. He's built like a tight end. He has nine catches, four of them have gone for touchdowns. Offensive coordinator Tony Franklin told us there's a lot of camaraderie on this offense that guys like 
to be around each other. They like to get out there and play and make individual contributions to a team win. Timeout is called with 1.29 to go. And nearing that red zone again, both teams have struggled when they have the short field inside that 20-yard line. Yeah, that, that, the field gets shorter there. Utah State's number one in the whack. La Tech has done a decent job. Utah State's hurt themselves clearly down in the red zone with some penalties and, had, and really lost an opportunity the last time down when they had a, a wide open receiver and missed it. When, you, when we talked to the Tech coaches and, and Sonny Dykes, they believe that in the fourth quarter, their style will wear teams down. Is that part of the, in the back of their minds here, knowing they trail, but they believe they'll be better later in the game? That's why their concern is low. I mean, they, they obviously would like to have played better. They're showing now what they can do. They've hung in this ball game. This is a tight football game. I'm not sure if they expected that. I, I'm certain over there in that Utah State sideline, they expected a tight ball game the because team, they got confidence in their defense. The only team that's run more plays this year is Oregon. Here's a little shuttle into the hands of Andrew Giat, and that's read pretty well by Utah State. A four-yard gain to the 17. There's a little wrinkle, a little pitch play underneath. It'll go as a pass, second and six now. La Tech with two timeouts left. 12th play of the drive now. Cameron wants the end zone. And it's Patton and it's broken up. And that's Lawson. They are picking on Lawson and Davis. And so far, they have been very good. And this is really a really tight coverage. Once again, no call. There is bumping and grinded by, by Lawson. That could easily have been called pass interference. That ball's in the air. He can't have his hands on the receiver. Talk about a battle within the game. There's one right there. Third down now. They need to get the football to the six-yard line for a first down. Three of nine on third downs here in the first half. Fakes the handoff. Cameron over the middle. Intercepted. The first Picked one. off by Davis. First His one. First. <laughs> of the year. Going, actually going back to last year. And that breaks a streak, an NCAA record streak this season, and dating back to last year without a pick, and here it is. Tried to fire it in there. It's just a great cover by Will Davis, who has three interceptions already this year. That's number four. 429 straight passes before an interception. And it ends right there. I don't know if that will ever happen again. It's kind of like Joe DiMaggio on 56 straight hits. Does and anybody know who he is besides yeah, me? Yeah, I, I do. 1936, <laughs> right? The Yankee Clipper. <laughs> I love but, it. But here's the deal. I, you wonder now, Tech has really struggled offensively, and a kid gets picked off. It'll show a lot about how he responds here, being picked off for the first time. They're going into the dressing room in under a minute, and – they will need to regroup. This is a shock to their system. This has not happened to them this year. They were down 27-0 to Texas A&M and came back and just lost on the last play of the game on a two-point interception uh, against Texas A&M. 59-57 they lost that football game. Cameron, one of three finalists for the Davey O'Brien Award given to the nation's top quarterback. He... In fact, this also breaks the string. They had 280 straight snaps coming into this game with no turnovers. So those things are now creeping into your head. Utah State dominating this first half. Just what the doctor ordered for Gary Anderson on the road. And they're going to take a knee and, and take this lead if they can into halftime, 17-3. They are dominating on the field of play, but the scoreboard, different story. There's plenty of time for La Tech to come back. And I think we'll come back out in the second half. We'll see a better La Tech offense. And I guess that's the silver lining here. You're only down 14. We you consider what this team can do. Yeah. The defense for Utah State continues to play lights out. Great defense. Very disciplined. The corners are obviously, Trey, extremely talented. Matching up against those La Tech outside receivers. 
So with a whack tattle on the line, some frustration for Sonny Dykes as they head to the locker room. 17-3, Utah State in front of Louisiana Tech. Bulldogs coming in with their highest ranking ever, 20th. In terms of the BCS polls, Utah State trying to run their record to 9-2. I, I think that the Utah State defense the big story here. In the first uh, absolutely the big story. They, we thought that they'd play well. They are. They're playing extremely disciplined. Like I said in the open, this is defensive football 101. We will send it to studio. We'll get a visit, a look around college football. 17-3 at the half. Utah State in front of Louisiana Tech. Second half right around the corner. First half time. 14 point lead for Ruston. 17-3. Big plays were the story early on for the Aggies. Their defense has played well throughout the course of the game. And Sonny Dykes looking to make some adjustments here. Yeah, Utah State just taken off where they left off before their bye week. They're still playing very aggressively and very disciplined on defense. On the other hand, La Tech, they have not connected offensively. You've seen some overthrown balls. You've seen some procedure penalties. You look at the penalties right there on those halftime stats, big penalties prevent Utah State from being way out. They've, they've killed themselves in the red zone with penalties. And the eight penalties, you have five of those, four of those are, are procedure penalties stopping first downs for La Tech. The big thing there is you look at the passing yards of La Tech, 83 yards. I expect them to come out and play a lot better in the second half. Aggies will get it to start the third quarter. Nelson's kick, returnable. At the eight-yard line, it's Kerwin Williams, who's had a great career of returning kicks, and he's out to the 22, and that's where Utah State will have their first third-quarter possession. Williams was big on a touchdown catch of 86 yards. He has been sensational in so many facets but equally important is the play of this guy Chucky Heaton 11 of 16 in the first half and never got him in a bad situation here's the problem La Tech's defense with front four can't put pressure either on the outside to tackle the quarterback or maintain him just keep him in the pocket so he can't rush up in the middle of the, of the defense to make first downs or big yards. He'll hand it off to Kerwin Williams on first down and he's across the 25 for four yards. Actually it's Joe Hill getting the carry as Williams is in on the kickoff hill for four yards. And, and really a lot of Tech's defense has played fairly well. They just can't sometimes capitalize with the beta great coverage to get the quarterback on the ground. Mel Johnson and Dave Clark combine on the tackle there. A lot on the line here. Louisiana Tech, their highest ranking ever. Utah State looking for their first WAC championship ever. Keaton over the middle through the hands of Cameron Webb. And incomplete. That was a bullet. Yes, he can throw it hard. Might have been more of a touch pass situation. But La Tech in their fan base right now. It's time to try to take this game back over. Third down, third and long. This is where you want people. This is what Utah State's done to La Tech. Forced these long third downs. Play fake for Keaton. Rolling left. Downfield. He wants Van Leeuwen. He's got him. He hangs on at the 45-yard line. 20-yard pickup. And a nice catch by the big 6-3 target. That's protecting the deep zone by the flat corner. He has got to stay back. He comes up and closes short. He should have been back there in a too deep secondary. Too much room. Keaton's 12th completion. He's over 200 yards through the air early here in the third quarter. Wants to put it up again, has some time. Deep ball, Jacobs at the 20. He's got it inside the 15. He beat his man, Craig Johnson, the nickel back to the football in another big play. Just come out throwing the football here to start this second half. That ball almost brought rain, it was so high. Just a perfectly thrown ball that Jacobs could run it down, get underneath it, and pull it in. 40. Three-yard pickup, Keaton to Jacobs, the fastest Aggie, outran Johnson, then beat him to the football. First down at the 14. Twin backs this time, Hill and Williams. Option, keeper, Keaton to the five. He's to the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Utah State. Well, 
Trey, they had him in a third and long and gave it up. That's when you need to put the hammer down and convert. And man, now it is right back in Utah, Utah State's favor. The big bow is swung back to them. La Tech's got a, an uphill battle right now. What, what a way to come out of the gate Absolutely. after halftime. Absolutely. Five plays, 78 yards. Keaton caps it off with a 14-yard touchdown run. I heard the fans on their feet. They were stomping their feet in the stands, and now it's dead. It's, the air is dead right now. It's all up to La Tech's offense right now. They know they know that their defense is going to give up points. Hey, they're behind. They, they, got a, they got a long ways to go, but they do have time on their side. Keaton with a touchdown pass and now a run for a score. Three touchdown lead. There's defensive coordinator Dave Aranda, the guy we talked about in the open, one of the top defenses in college football, allowing just 13 points. They've played at a whole different level against one of the top offenses in the game. Big lead. His defense will take the field after that touchdown run by Chucky Keaton. There's the kick off of Banks. It's loose at the 15, and the Aggies might have it. There's a scramble for the ball. It hit Banks square on the shoulder pad, and Utah State has a fumble recovery. The things that you never expect to happen on your sideline just happen. He's excited about running this ball back. It ripped right off the top of his shoulder pad, and he had really had no chance to get it. He's going to make a better effort. There's a lot of Aggies in on that ball. Cameron Sanders, the guy that finally hopped on it, the junior from Oklahoma City. And what a turn of events here. And there's a veteran Banks that's dumbfounded right now. He's stunned. Not a good feeling. Seen it happen. A lot of crazy things can happen with this football that's it's kind of odd shaped. This team coming in, Louisiana Tech, third at the FBS level in turnover margin. That has backfired today. Cameron's been picked. Here's Williams on the carry. Flag is thrown as he eases it inside the 10-yard line. And where this flag is thrown makes me think it's going to go against Utah State. That's freaking amazing. They have made big penalties in the red zone today. That'll help out the Tech cause a little bit defensively, but still they've got to be in a, a little bit shell-shocked here. I mean, this is a game that could be 27-3, and you normally say, hey, Tech can make that up, but their offense hasn't been anything close to what uh, they've been all year long. 27 could be 31-3. You just don't, this quarterback is playing very well, very smart with the football. First and 20 at the 22 now for Chucky Keaton. Hands it off to Hill. And the sophomore from Fullerton, California, straight ahead for three yards to the 19. This will be a critical red zone stop for this defense that's had a hard time every place on the field so far this year. And sometimes it's the little things. Tech needs something positive to go their way. They Absolutely. haven't had much today. Not much. Second and 16 now. They gave Hill four on that last carry. Williams is the lone setback this time. Van Leeuwen and Austin split bottom of the screen. Play fake for Keaton. Underneath route. Hits his tight end for a short gain to the 13-yard line. And gang tackle right there is Tiala Vea. It'll set up a third down and about 10 from that point. Okay, they tried to sneak Kellen Bartlett back into the other corner of the end zone. And, and Jamel Johnson just did a terrific job. Staying with his coverage, looking at his keys. That's what defensive football players have to do. To play good defense, you read your keys and you react to those keys. Solomon, Nothing else. Solomon Randall, one of 32 seniors on that last tackle. They're three of four from the red zone. Here's Keaton under duress. Keaton with a flag thrown, throws incomplete. Intended for Austin in the far corner. And the flag thrown behind the Aggies. Let's see what this call is. And it looks like it's going to be a hold or a procedure against a hold. The question is, do you want him to kick the football right now or do you want to take a shot? Kevin Wimpy, the left tackle, the guilty party. They will decline that penalty, and we're going to see Nick Diaz again. This will be a big field goal here. No question about it. This is big for the defense, big for the team for, for La Tech to get 
a, a field goal just out of this a total misplay on special teams. Diaz has converted from 38. This will be a 30-yarder out of the hold of Jerron Bentrude from the right hash. And he splits the uprights. They cash in off the fumble on the kick. It went off of DJ Banks. So Gary Anderson's team extends their lead. 27-3, early third quarter. Brand of the Aggies defensive coordinator has held one of the top offenses in college football to just three points. They just cashed in on a field goal after a special team's fumble. It was a fumble by this guy, DJ Banks. He'll get another opportunity here. Bentrude ready to kick it away. The Aggies have dominated. This is not uncharted territory for the Bulldogs. We'll explain here in a bit. Banks from the five. And he's taken down at the 21-yard line. This is a team, and you mentioned it earlier, John, that trailed AM by big numbers and almost pulled off a victory. They were down 46-23 to Texas AM in Shreveport in the third quarter and came all the way back to almost win that thing. They're down 24 here, but they've got to get back to playing offense the way they're used to. They've got to play their offense, and I don't think they're going to go into any two-minute type deal, but I also don't expect Dave Aranda over on that Utah State sideline to play defense any differently. He's going to continue to, to play aggressively with his players substituting, trying to get him into third and longs again so he can be aggressive to make the ball come out quick. It's almost mind-boggling that they only have 83 yards passing. This is a team that leads the nation in total offense, and they've been shut down. They try to run it with Dixon and a couple yards, and that's it. They've tried to lean on that run game uh, more than the pass game, thinking they could find something there. Well, they, they wanted to see if they could take this experienced offensive line and knock Utah State back. They have not been able to do that. Just on that last play, just shows you what Utah State's doing. They are dominating up front. There's been some procedure penalties against the offensive line as well. They're a little nervous at this point. Coach Anderson said, this might be the fastest pace we've ever seen facing this Tech team. Well, they've matched up pretty well against it. Cameron going deep, wants Patton. Inside the 45, he's got it. Quentin Patton with a catch, he had to come back to it and turn his body around, a big play. That's just great athletic ability and focus to haul that pass in. Tight coverage. Lawson was step for step with him, but when he turned away, he brought it in in the sideline. 39-yard pickup to the 45. Here's Dixon trying to get to the outside. Dixon inside the 40 and hammered out of bounds at the 38. He took a big-time shot, and he gets right back up. He is so tough, so powerful. Right back to the huddle. Actually, the no huddle. Oh, that was Devontae Glover Wright that unloaded on him. Plays a lot of football. Plays even on the offensive side of the ball for him sometimes at Utah State. Good football player. Seven-yard pickup, handoff, Holly straight ahead. He hits the hole quickly, and a first down to the 34. McKeith Brady on the tackle. What a nice change up to be able to go back and forth between the power back in Dixon and the short, shorter, faster, quicker back in Holly. Sticks that foot in the ground, he's upfield. He can shake, too. Cameron has had a subpar game, trying to lean on the running game a little bit. Hands it off to Holly, and this time the Aggies are ready for it. Kyler Fackrell shutting that play down. There he is again, number 52, all over the football field. Like this guy as a football player. Once again, up front, string the outside, sweep play. A number of players set the edge, pursuit players get there, and the fill player, Fackrell, makes the play. Coach Anderson said this season, sky's the limit for this kid. Great frame, just a redshirt freshman from Mesa, Arizona. Play fake for Cameron. Deep ball for the corner, and it's incomplete. Patton couldn't hang on. He had a great chance at it near the goal line. Perfectly thrown football right down the chimney. Good coverage, but not good enough. That ball's thrown quite well. Got to hang on to that one. And, and Patton, I'm sure, knows every bit of that. Patton has had a battle every play, but you don't see him miss many opportunities as a receiver most experienced wide receiver coming into the game with 83 catches. 
Three catches today, 46 yards. Had the big catch on this drive. Hand off to the near side on the carry. It's Dixon spins inside the 25. First down as he's out of bounds at the 20. Pickup of 15 for Kenneth Dixon. Watch the block he got here on the perimeter. There's the offensive lineman. Watch the receivers. They all stick and stay with their hands driving the defenders back so that he could make that run. Wow. Inside Impressive. the and they'll go again, the same play. Dixon left side puts his head down, and he drives to the 15 for four yards. How many times have we said that? There's the same, same play, play again, especially into, into the boundary, into the, the sideline of La Tech. That's so impressive. You know, Tony Franklin, the offensive coordinator, told us that they are going to sustain blocks. Look at the offensive line. That's rough and tumble football right there. Brady met him in the hole and took a couple steps backward to, as he took the hit there. Second and six, here's Holly to the near side, slants to the 10, he's got a first down as he backs his way to the five yard line. First and goal. What a change up to be able to go between these two backs. The power back in Dixon, and then the slasher in Holly. He sees that hole, he sticks his left foot in the ground and he's upfield. Big bone formation now, first and goal. Holly, same play, slanting left side, and he's down to the two yard line. This is the, where they believe, and you mentioned it, where the offensive line can really be a factor late in game. C.D. Perot, I guarantee you, those guys have their offensive line coach's mindset, and they are coming off the football and hitting people in the mouth right now. Steven Warner, the fifth-year senior, Lombardi candidate leading the way at center. Handoff left side, Dixon, touchdown, Bulldogs. That's a statement right there, Trey. That was impressive. Just mashing people backwards, putting them on their backs as Dixon carries it in. Woo. That, was, that was entertaining. 25th rushing touchdown, FBS freshman record already in that category as Nelson's extra point. Makes it 27 to 10. Kenneth Dixon and that ground game, getting the Bulldogs back into it, leaning on the big guys up front for a score. Kenneth Dixon has 68 yards, but more importantly, he capped off an 11-play, 78-yard touchdown drive with a touchdown run. A much-needed score for the Bulldogs, and it was a physical drive. It gets him back within 17. Here's Jacobs on the kick return. Trying to get to the outside. Jacobs turns the corner, and he's out of bounds at the 34-yard line. That's a great return after what I would call a bludgeon ball drive by the La Tech O-line and running backs. That's, that's what they used to call nine on seven, knocking people smash mouth. That was impressive. And the crowd senses, there's a sense of urgency here. Yes, they, they know that uh, this, uh, they're running out of time here midway through the third. This is a big, big drive right here for the La Tech defense. They need to come alive. Williams is the running back. They send Travis Reynolds in motion, top of the screen. Two receivers split right. Keaton looking to throw it. He's pressured. Chucky on the move. Throws incomplete. Threw it to the sideline. And mostly just out of bounds, but Bartlett was in the vicinity. They missed a hole back there on the defensive end. First time starting this year, Kendrick James, number 22. He has half his jersey off right there. Sometimes you can get away with a few things from yeah, time to time. You saw that with the Eagles and then at the <laughs> college level. Happens to everybody. Option game now, they hand it off to Hill, who's the motion man, and a nice game for number 32, Joe Hill up to the 41-yard line. Kind of a, what, a stretch play there. Absolutely. Whether you're going to give it to him or are you going to keep it, that's the advantage of a quarterback that's really handy with his hands and can run with his feet. We're three of eight on third downs, and the Tech fans to their feet here at Joe IA Stadium. Third and three.
They put Williams in motion. Keaton, first down catch made by Tialavea. They're going to mark his forward progress to the 46. Big target at 6'4", 260. He hauls it in. Doesn't catch a lot of balls, but this is a great catch right here. Three guys. He's the last guy out in the pattern. Great design of the play. Stretches the defense and has Tialavea come out late. Ship Hester, the 50-year senior on the tackle, but it's good enough for a first down. Keaton has been sensational through the air. 15 of 23, 270 yards. Play fake this time. Down the middle. Jacobs at the 37, hangs on for another first down. Tackle made by Mike Schrang, the strong side linebacker, but that was a bullet on the money. What happens here is the play fake holds the linebackers and opens up the seam for Jacobs as he's coming on a intermediate dig route. The linebackers get pulled up and it opens it wide open. It's hard for a safety or a corner to cover that intermediate dig. Split backs, option, straight ahead. They'll give it to Williams on the dive play and he gets three yards as he leans forward to the 33 yard line hard earned three yards right there you know and he's he's 5'8 189 but he can play that power game a little bit he's a tough back. He is a approaching the six minute mark 27 10 utah state the winner grabs a share of the WAC championship tech has a school high ranking on the line their 20th bcs poll 19th in the other polls, here's an end around into the hands of Nets and the freshman. And the speedster inside the 25 has a Utah State first down. He is a freshman from Oakland Park, Florida, who's made some big plays this year. 5'7", 145 pounds, I can't find him. Nice timing for that play. La Tech is starting to try to play some great defense. Change it up with a miss, a total misdirection on the reverse. High school teammate of their receiver, Travis Reynolds, Florida kid as well. First down at the 25, nearing that red zone again. Again, Natson in motion, this time into the backfield. Chucky going to keep it on the option. Keaton to the 20, finds a seam to the 5, and he is in. Touchdown, Aggies. Keaton finds the end zone again. You try to feather a quarterback out there on the perimeter and an option quarterback like this, you better get him on the ground. He's too good. He's probably the best runner out there on the option play. They had two La Tech players there. Nobody took the quarterback. Chucky e. Keaton has made it 33 to 10. They go seven plays, 66 yards. He has two touchdown passes, two touchdown runs, and he's stealing the spotlight for a guy that's a Davey O'Brien semifinalist, Colby Cameron. What an effort from the Aggies tonight. 34-10 with five minutes of change to go here in the third quarter. Had some opportunities on a couple of different third downs. Couldn't come up with it. Utah State making the possession longer and taking more clock up yards through a, ver a variety of different ways. I mean, we had a reverse, we had some quarterback option, we had some throws. Chucky Keaton is, is the total package here tonight. On the phone trying to get uh, some more thoughts from the coaching staff, but two, 288 passing, 102 rushing, four touchdowns total. The thing that the coaches say about him, his work ethic is so contagious to, to the players around him. Everybody sees it. Everybody gets energy from it. Everybody wants to get better just like he wants to get better. That's, that's really good for a football team. And once again, this is not a, 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 a totally experienced football team. The defense is very young in some positions. It's hard to believe Keaton's a sophomore oh, the way he plays. Absolutely. 24-point advantage. Banks away the kickoff for Bentrude. One hopper into the end zone, and they'll bring out the football on the touchback. Trey, they don't have a senior on their offensive line at uh, Utah State. Not one. 
They're all juniors, sophomores. You know, they also had an injury to Oscar Molina Sanchez, a right tackle. Have not seen him this year. He would have been a, a guy that would have helped him. But the way their offense is clicking now, it's the right time to do it in November. They're peaking at the right time. You know, that bye week certainly helped them a lot in the preparation for La Tech. They are playing really well on both sides of the ball. They're not getting the silly penalties they had in the first half. Here's Holly on the carry off the right side. He's across the 30 for six yards. Now they focused on the run. How long do you stay with that? Down by 24. I see McGrady, by the way. Uh, uh, safety going off the field right there. Brady. McCade, Brady. Goes off a limping a little bit. They've got to put the ball in the air here, Trey. Here they go on the play fake. Downfield, guess who? It's Patton, and he's got it. He beats his man for the big play. They keep going to number four, and they should. One of the top receivers in college football. They stretch him out on that one. The competition between these two corners versus Patton is just fun to watch. 39-yard pickup working against Will Davis. First down at the 31. Hand off to Dixon. Off the right side. Dixon moving the pile. Strong run, and he's finally pushed out of bounds, they'll mark him at the 26-yard line. See, when you have the ability of the quarterback to connect with the, with the deep throws, you can throw some runs in here as well. Uh, right now, there's still a lot of time left. La Tech just has had their sort of struggles stopping the Utah State offense. Second and four from the 25. Cameron for Miles White in the corner, comes back to it, makes the catch, and a touchdown for the Bulldogs. They answer quickly. Yeah, that's pretty fast. Two deep throws. The last one, the touchdown pass to, to White. That ball's thrown up there. White just knows he has to come back, step inside the cornerback, Nevin Lawson, and make a big play, catching the ball in his hands. Four plays, 75 yards, takes him just a minute and 16 seconds. 25-yard touchdown pass to White. That's his fifth TD grab of the year. Still plenty of football left to be played in this one as Nelson makes it a 34-17 game. Miles White, the Michigan State transfer. Ton of talent, according to Coach Dykes. Should be as good as Patton. That's saying a lot. That speaks to what they think of him as a receiver. Played some football. Not a small guy, he's a 6'1", 185 pound, redshirt senior. He's been out in the practice field. He knows how to come back and make those plays. The ball was, was lofted high, and Miles White just had a bead on it. Stepped inside, lost it, made a big catch. All right, John, so it appears that Tech has found their stride on offense. Their problem now is, is stopping Utah State. Absolutely. They're having a tough time defensively. What, what can they do to try to get force a long third down and get off the field. Right now, keep between the option game and throwing the football downfield, he is, he is taking over. This Louisiana Tech crowd has been good tonight. They've been loud. Team trying to battle back here. Nelson's kick to Jacobs. He's gonna come out of there. Jacobs gets a block, and he's out to the 23-yard line. Janell Johnson on the tackle. Well, Chucky Keaton has had some big games this year for Utah State. Maybe the biggest, the win over Utah, where he had a couple touchdowns, a big scramble in their, their overtime win over the Utes. But he's just a sophomore. This one would be quite the feather in the cap because it puts him within striking range of winning an outright conference championship. That means a lot to this staff. Oh, my goodness. The way they've come come on, they have gone to, they are looking at back-to-back -back bowl games. They've never done that in about 30 years. It'd be an amazing feat. Here's a handoff to Kerwin Williams. Bounces to the outside. Got a first down to the 40, and Williams finally tripped up. They'll mark him out at the 48-yard line. Williams heating up now. Right back with a big play of their own answers they, they just got too many players there in this defense right now just not sure where they should be 
Got a little bit of a clip there on the crack back. The spring Williams. 25 yards for number 25. He's rushed for 66 on 10 carries tonight. It's time they'll send him in motion. Pump fake. Now Keaton tries to drop it off, and that is almost intercepted. Austin got a hand on it, and he almost kept it alive. It could have gone the other way. Absolutely. That's, that would have been a big play going the other direction. That was Bo Feet that had a beat on it. From the 48 this time, they'll go trips to the left side. Cal State, they show a lot of different looks. Shrine coming on a blitz. Misses Keaton. Keaton to midfield. Keaton has a first down inside the 40. Trey, this guy is supersonic. No, with, the, with the dive option coming out on the perimeter, he's got some blocks, but he makes his blockers look even better than they are. He's got great, great feet. Vision. 12 yards on that pickup, 12 carries, 114 yards, couple touchdown runs for Chucky Keaton. Stealing the spotlight from Louisiana Tech tonight. It has been the Keaton show. Williams has been big, but Keaton has been big in the run and the pass. Well, calls his number here, and they shut it down as they dropped him for a loss back to the 43. Right, that's the first time I can remember them stopping. Chucky Keaton. That's, that's the first time I've seen him with a TFL tackle for a loss. Keel Lucas got to him. They brought pressure off the edge. There was no place to, to go up and around. He had to go inside and he got some penetration. Lucas making a big play. He has really matured this year into a leader, more consistent at that defensive tackle spot. Second and 13 now as they show blitz. They're coming. Keaton over the middle, incomplete. Wanted Bartlett. And it's third and long. When Giles, on the pressure, stays with Bartlett, who is one of their most dependable receivers, particularly in the short crossing routes. Right there. Now, what do we have? We have another big third down. It's time for La Tech defense to stand up and make a play here to go over the sideline and have some Gatorade. Four of nine on third downs today. Blitz coming. Keaton deep ball. He wants Austin. Lincoln's on the coverage. And he's got he's it got at the it. five. How did he haul it in, John? He took it away from Liggins at the five-yard line. Number one, it picked up the pressure. They were all one-on-ones. There's no free safety. You have no place to play except over inside the receiver, which he does. He leaps, it's just too big for the defender. 6-2 frame, a huge catch for the sixth year senior. He's been a great story battling back from the injuries. First and goal now. 6-2 over 5-10. Great timing by the receiver. Keaton continues to deliver in the clutch. Fakes it to Reynolds on the end around. Looking to throw. Throws back in the end zone. And it is incomplete. He had two receivers in the area. And that's always dangerous. As Tialavea couldn't haul it in. Yeah, the crossing receiver in Bartlett. Tialavea was, was there. I think he was trying to hit Bartlett. Second and goal now. Chad Boyd, by the way, the tech safety out. Status unknown. He's off the field right now. Option. Chucky turns it up. And he leans forward inside the two-yard line. They'll have a third down coming up. And this is a huge play at this juncture. If they can punch it in, it really is going to make it an uphill climb for the Bulldogs. You know, Keaton's also strong and powerful. He was hit about the four-yard line by Kevin Kissenberg. He just went forward for another three yards. From the one, Williams straight ahead, and he powers his way to the goal line and no indication. He's in. Touchdown. 
A late signal, but Kerwin Williams has a huge touchdown. They have 40 on the board. Trey, <laughs> this defense and offense for La Tech all year long is, is known that this is an issue. They're going to give up some plays. They're going to give up some touchdowns. But this is getting deep now. We're, we're just about here at the end of the third quarter. And not one time has, has La Tech been able to stop Utah State in the second half. And that one goes nine plays, 77 yards. They're just maintaining this comfort zone with these touchdowns. Make it 41 now after the Diaz extra point. Williams has a touchdown catch and a touchdown run. His counterpart, Keaton, has accounted for four touchdowns. And it's 41 to 17. Now, this Tech team has given up a lot of points this year, but this is a bit shocking, the, the way this game has gotten out of hand. The, the, the way that Utah State answers every single time that La Tech moves the football. It, it, you know, they, they had a better first half from La Tech in the third quarter here, which is about to come to an end. Utah State has matched it. Just matched it, score for score. And Keaton is directing an attack that is making a lot of big plays. You know, and I never forget the comment from Matt Wells, the offensive coordinator this week. He said to us, we can hit home runs, meaning the baseball analogy, we can come up with the big plays. And they've done that. I mean, they have, uh, they started with the Williams catch. And the, and the other important thing that he said, we need to score when we get in the red zone. And they've done that almost every single time, except that turnover on the kickoff return that was fumbled. No doubt about it. Banks across the 20, look out, DJ Banks. He could go, way. he could go. 30, he's gone. <laughs> Touchdown Tech, they answer just like that. Wow. He's explosive, we said that at the beginning of the show. And he is now putting on the show. Oh, you gotta like it. He had a fumble kickoff return earlier in the game and now he just busts this one down the side they ain't gonna catch him he's too fast 98 yards for the junior from nearby west monroe louisiana to make it 41 23 and this one has really opened up here in the second half we're gonna have a 17 point game again here three possessions La Tech has just got to find a way to stop him one time. It's really on Louisiana Tech's defense right now. It really is, Trey. Nelson's extra point makes it 41-24 with a quarter and chains left. And I think we've just begun. This is 17-3, Utah State at the half, and this is developed into a shootout now. This is like the NBA basketball 10, 15 years ago. This is the last two minutes to determine the game. Who has the ball last? But no, once again, the cushion that Utah State has created is the problem because La Tech's defense has been unable to stop in the second half. With so much riding on this game, a share of the WAC title. This has really developed into an interesting game. Again, if if they're not able to slow down Utah State and playing playing the devil's advocate here, Utah State. They might continue to do this because Louisiana Tech, second in the nation in yardage allowed, they've not really stopped anybody consistently no, all year long. They got to keep the hammer down, and once again, they got to keep putting that ball in, in Keaton's hands. Let him make the plays. They, they, they don't have any answers right now over there in the La Tech defense to, to handle Keaton and all the different things that he's doing. So that, if I was over in that uh, Utah State sideline, that's what I'd be thinking. But you know. <laughs> All week long in preparation for this game. You're out there on the West Coast. I'm over here on the East Coast. I enjoyed my drive over from Monroe. <laughs> I thought I was in the rolling hills of Virginia. Beautiful up here in Ruston, Louisiana. Really beautiful. But I, I couldn't wait for this game to start, and I have had no disappointments. It's been fun. Here's just the return by Jacobs, and he's bottled up as he fails to get across the 17-yard line. Gary Anderson told us this week, though, look, we're not going to have a 7-3 game. Yeah. Prophetic, to say the least. It's going to be a wild one. Special teams always can help in an effort like this. This is a massive effort. 
between both of these teams. Maximum strain out there on the field. That's what the game's all about. Strain. You got to strain to win. Chucky Keaton this season threw for 404 yards, a career high against UNLV. He's already thrown for 327 yards here today. Williams straight ahead. He breaks one across the 30 for a first down, 12 yards on that pickup. I wonder sometimes why are these seams getting split? It, it's one of those defenders up front. Most of the time it's the defensive line. They don't hold their gap. It's one back running, so it's kind of gapped out football. When you throw the quarterback in there with Keaton, he becomes the extra guy. He has a gap to himself. 12 carries, 79 yards for that guy, Kerwin Williams. Also has a touchdown run and a touchdown catch. Keaton to the air, the sideline to Natson, the freshman, and a short gain to the 34, three yards on that pickup. A heck of an effort out there to make that tackle. Bryson Abraham to shake off a blocker and make a play. And that is the final play of the third quarter. One quarter to go with the share of the WAC title on the line. Utah State and Louisiana Tech. Some big plays so far. One quarter to go from Rustin. Title on the line. 45 combined points in that third quarter. Here we go into the fourth. It's a little bit like a championship boxing match. They keep delivering knockout blows, but they keep getting back up. Second and seven at the 34 for Keaton and the Aggies. He'll keep it. Both feet on the tackle after a short gain. Third down and four coming up from the 37. It's a convertible down and distance for the La Tech defense. But it's not been going their way on this down and distance for them so far. They've got to do it. They've got to, they've got to finish the job here. 6 of 11 on third downs. Keaton has rushed for 117. He's thrown for 330. Is it runner pass here? I, I put it in Keaton's hands. Keaton underneath, and it is incomplete. Bartlett, the intended receiver, and he'll have to punt it away. There it is. They got one. I think that's the first one of the, of the second half that they've converted. I don't remember this many players going back and forth like a punt team and a punt return team going out there. I just don't remember. It's just been lights out football. Yeah, well, the guy we just saw return a kick right there, DJ Banks has a punt return opportunity possibly here as Bennett gets the kick away from the 26. Banks from the 14. And they cover it well. He's out of bounds at the 19 yard line. Big kick, better coverage. 14 minutes, five seconds to go. Cameron and company heating up on offense. Can they rally? A 10-game whack winning streak on the line for Louisiana Tech. A number 20 ranking in the BCS rankings as well. Trailing Utah State 41-24. They'll start this drive early in the fourth quarter. Hand off to Dixon, he breaks a tackle, and Kenneth Dixon, the freshman out to the 25-yard line. Five yards, hard-earned yards there. Strong effort by Dixon. Playing as a true freshman. He is, he is quite a football player. He was tearing it up in high school last year. Now he's playing here in a WAC championship type game. And a strong Arkansas, an under-the-radar kid. They're glad to have him here. Cameron throws low, and the catch is made for a first down by Hunter Lee. The Flower Mound, Texas product. Moves the chains to the 31. A lot of time, but this is a big drive. They get a score here, get the crowd behind them. He would uh, do a lot for that Tech sideline. Well, they're coming off that uh, stop by the defense. And this time they throw to the near side to Quentin Petten and a pick up to the 37, six yards on that play. He's their playmaker, their biggest playmaker. Patton coming in, 83 catches, 11 touchdowns, fifth in the FBS among wide receivers in that category. 
four receiver look. Cameron underneath, catch made for a first down. The short passing game effective with Andrew Gia to the 47. Great timing throw. Inside slant. And they hurry up, picking up the tempo here. Hand off to Dixon, running to the left, spins inside the midfield strike down to the 46 for five more yards. We have not been able to play at the tempo you're accustomed to seeing with Tech this year, but starting to get into a rhythm here. They've had spurts of that tonight. Absolutely, Trey. They are starting to move the football five yards at a time. He'll hand it off to Dixon to the right side. Bounces outside and has a first down. He runs over a man and goes to the 41-yard line. Brian Sweet, the tackle, he took some punishment on that run. Changing personnel. Look at the La Tech running. The, because they ran the football into the sideline, they changed personnel. Utah State can't. Three first downs on the drive as we near the 12-minute mark. Cameron has had a subpar game, still 201 yards through the air. He's got him moving now. Play fake. Downfield, he wants Patton against Davis. It's broken up at the last minute. Will Davis has had his hands full, but he's had some answers against Pat. He really has, Trey. This has been so much fun to watch these two competing against each other. Deep ball once again. Very, very well thrown, but Davis is right there to get his stick his hands up in between Patton's hands to knock it away at the last split second. And that's two next level guys. The coaches no tell question. us there's no doubt. At the, you'll see them play it on Sunday. Second down now. Cameron. R.P. Stewart the catch. And he's taken down at the 32, just short of the first down. Sweet was over there again. The fifth year senior will hobble off after that catch. I'm not sure what that call was made there by the, the referee. It's a third down and a couple at the 33 yard line. Four of 11 on third downs today. Cameron, quick toss. Patton's got it, first down to the 25. And out of bounds to the 21 yard line. Again, working against Will Davis. The duel continues. Short throws, deep throws. Quick hitch right here. Trying to make some more yards after the run, but Davis hangs on. He's strong. Six catches, 102 yards now for Quinton Patton. He's played much better in the second half from the 21. Cameron. Oh, what a catch. Circus. That was David Drew that went high to get it. Got his six-foot frame up there and hauled it in. Very nice snag. Play action. Pulls out, fires a rocket. Boy, that's that's great timing. Leaping, climb the ladder, and catch that football. First and goal from the six, driving to the left side. It's Dixon, and he's within the one and close to the goal line. All of a second down and goal from there. Trey, is it not? It's my mistake. Are they just speeding up now? They're going really, really fast. This is what they want to do. They couldn't do it early. They're doing it now. Straight ahead on the dive. Touchdown. <laughs> Dixon, his second touchdown run. You, you remember what they said during our conference call. We want to wear down the defense. That appears to be what's happening. I don't, I don't see Utah State playing any prevent defense. They're just getting worn down some. They have really played a physical brand of football, rushing it here in the second half. As Nelson makes it a 10-point game, 12 plays, 80 yards in 3 minutes and 11 seconds. 41-31 with the WAC title on the line. It has tied a school record, 27 total touchdowns in a season. That was set by Troy Edwards. He has a chance to break it, but more importantly, draws his team within 10 points with 10.54 to go. Plenty of time remaining for Tech. Trying to mount a comeback. Chuck Jacobs to the 25 for the Aggies. Out across the 30. Nice return from Jacobs to the 32-yard line. They have liked that kickoff return to cross the field, a grass return, we used to call it. Finding the spot, a weakness, what they believe in that.
kickoff coverage of La Tech. Good field position. The Aggies take the, the offensive side. 548 yards of total offense for Utah State. 415 for Louisiana Tech. They have heated up, but they really have not found how to slow down this guy. Chucky Keaton, 330 through the air, 117 on the ground from the sophomore quarterback. Hands it off to Williams. To the outside, puts his head down and runs over a man across the 40-yard line. Is that something? That's, a, that's Craig Johnson, the nickelback out there. He just put his sights and then just lowered the boom and took him for a ride. You know, Johnson's not big at 5'8", 180, but he ran over him like he wasn't oh. there. Once again, Carroll Williams, 5'8", 189. Just tough. Couple of nails. Second and two now, the 41. Williams straight ahead this time. And close to the first down. Let's see what Mark it. it looks like it is a first down. It is to the 45. Chucky Keaton always a threat. Stick it in Curry William Williams' belly and then take it out on the perimeter. This is what we're going to see in this drive. 230 yards on the ground for the Aggies. They've done it in a variety of ways between the tackles and outside. Here's Williams inside, bounces it out across midfield. He breaks a couple more tackles on that carry to the 48 for seven yards. A little misdirection. Draw play coming back with a blocker, lead blocker. He'll take the rest over there on the sideline. Because they got Joe Hill ready to come in because he's played a good ball game for them as well. Williams with 93 yards. Looking at a second and four now with Hill in at running back. Looking to milk the clock a little bit too. Here. Keeping it on the ground. And up to Hill. Stretch play to the far side. Tries to cut it back and gets a couple, and that's it. Good defensive play by Vontarius Dora, the redshirt freshman from West Point, Mississippi. They're looking now at a third and three. It's going to bring up the third down again. A manageable distance for the defense. Great hustle to come over and make that play on the replay. 6-12 on third downs. Williams. Stays off the field. Hills the running back. He goes in motion. Keaton throws it incomplete. I don't think Austin was ready for it. He wasn't. It's fourth down. That's about the only play that I've seen him not make today and tonight. He just slung it a little too soon on the slant to Austin. A big stop as Banks awaits the punt from Tyler Bennett. Eight and a half minutes to go. All three timeouts remaining. We could be in for quite a finish. Bennett hangs it up there. And that one's going to find the end zone. Good job by the punt returner, DJ Banks, there to hold off the punt coverage, guys. They did not know where the ball was. They got to look up and find themselves. Well, Kobe Cameron has found his footing, so to speak. Their offense really struggling in the first half. Just three points has put 28 on the board here in the second half. And you look at his numbers, and all of a sudden they're looking more Cameron Light, 236 yards. Cameron Light. Okay, okay, big bone. Shook off a first half interception. Here he is on play action. Cameron downfield for Patton. And he overshoots him at the 45. Just missing on the double move. Close corner route. One man route. Pretty good job by the corner and the safety getting a double underneath and over top of him. Twenty-one of thirty-eight through the air for Cameron. Patton's been his go-to guy of late. Six catches, one hundred two yards. Play action again to the far side. 
It's a first down grab. Yards after catch, big there for David Groom. They're making some yardage now, running off the corner and sending the number two receiver to the flat. There's no defender out there. The safety's going to get out there, or the linebacker, Fackrell's going to walk out and play that route. Brian Sweet on the tackle. They go to the other side this time. And it's Drew again. Same play, other side, and that goes for seven yards. Repeat plays. I've heard this all my life, that team repeat plays. I've never seen one do it quite like La Tech. They actually do it, and they're really successful with it. They hurry up now from the 40-yard line, second down and two. Cameron, the other sideline, and that's a first down grab for Miles White. Tackle made by Lawson, but they move the chains to the 44, under eight minutes to go. Once again, the line stops, it's a first down. They get to settle in, look to the sideline, get to their best play. I've got coaches over there jumping up and down at the La Tech sideline. They're all excited. This is right in Tech's wheelhouse, this hurry up, up-tempo style. They're not phased by having to play fast during the seven minute mark. Here's Dixon, almost fumbles it, carries it across midfield and lunges close to the first down at the 46. Saw another sign of the Utah State defense wearing down. I watched Fackrell come across. Watch him put this tackle on to Kenneth Dixon right here. Just use the shoulder. You better put both arms around that guy. You can't get that done. That's not good enough to stop him. You're getting tired. Over 100 yards rushing. Now they throw it to Dixon, and he's hammered. And that was Fackrell who hammered him. And now a late flag comes in. They're going to call that a late hit? Got to be a late hit. On the second tackle. Fackrell made a terrific play to come up and chop Dixon down. Yep. Oh, uh, my goodness. That is so foolish to come in and spear like that. That's Al Lapuaho, the senior end. That's a possible ejection in my book when you do something like that. You've got to get that out of football. Boy, that is a doesn't belong. ill-advised. That 15-yard penalty down to the 30 now. And barely, barely used a minute of time here. Here we are at seven minutes. Tech on the move. Cameron, and they're going to blow this play dead. Flag comes in. They're going to back up the Bulldogs. Utah State almost jumped offside, got back, and then they flinched. La Tech offensive line. Been a problem in the first half, not a problem in the second half until now. This really helps the Aggies because they can get their subs in now, right? Yes. Gives them a breath, gives, gives them, them a chance. A chance to breathe. Once again, what do they like to do? They like to wear the defenses down and win in the fourth quarter. That's the plan. First and 15 now from the 35. They're within two scores. Tech has had to battle back today. Here's Dixon on the carry to the left side. And he gets five yards back to the 30-yard line. Fackrell over there. Tell you what, I, I may have been picking on Fackrell a little while ago, but this guy's just a redshirt freshman. He's playing a lot of football tonight. He's not in high school anymore. He's a good player. I'd say the same about Dixon. Last year was in strong Arkansas playing high school football. <laughs> Absolutely. Second and 11 now. Cameron looking down the middle of the field. He wants Stewart. Can't hang on. And that was McCade Brady that busted it up. R.P. Stewart almost had his fifth touchdown catch of the year. Wow, was that pretty. That's straining, folks, right there. Look at these guys all going to play the ball in the air. Wow, could have been a great catch. Could have been an interception. Third and 11 now as Cameron looks for the call from the sideline. Ninth play of this drive. They're 5 of 12 on third downs. Cameron looking to the sideline. Drew, the catch, goes airborne and has the first down to the 18. They're, High school teammates hook it up again. They're killing Utah State with running off number one receiver and then have a number two receiver come to the flat. That's not getting covered by Utah State. Here's Ray Holly slanting to the right side and he's down to the 13 for five more yards as we hit the six minute mark. And, and Trey, this, this defense is worn out right now at Utah State. They are 
They are. All of their hands are on their hips as a defensive front. Here's Holly again, same play. Gets to the outside this time, inside the 10, and close to the first down. And he'll have it at the six. First and goal from there. And they have a chance to draw within three here. It's amazing the comeback, how they battle back. You are told that they never give in. And that is certainly a true story. They're down 24 on a couple of occasions. Down 10 now. First to go from the seven. Cameron looking. Throws it away. That was interesting. A rollout to the short side of the field. Crossing backs, trying to hit. It's, it's called a swap boot. They're all covered. Good job by the Aggie defense picking up all of the receivers. No place to go. Throw it away. Smart block. They've been so good in the red zone defense. Tops in the whack, trying to force a field goal here. On second and goal, it's Dixon. Hit at the 10 and driven backwards by Utah State. Brady was there, got some help from Dowdy, the inside linebacker. Big play. Big effort there. Looks like they're going to be. Get the 11 though. Had some personnel changes. Four receiver look. Dowdy, by the way, 14 tackles after that last one. He leads them in that category. Under five minutes to go. Cameron. Over the middle. Intercepted. It's picked off by Utah State's Jake Dowdy. And Anderson's team turns him back again in the end zone. Well, you gotta take your hats off to Dave Arena and his defense hanging in there. Just hanging off the cliff there trying to breathe and make a play here and they do. He thought he had Patton coming across in the post area the linebacker dropped back deep and picked off the quarterback, play in his eyes. Terrific play by Dowdy. Two interceptions tonight after 429 without a pick all season long for Cameron. Twice, both in the end zone, Davis and then the inside linebacker, Dowdy. Absolutely. Two picks in the end zone, undercutting the receiver. Well, you've got to tip your hat to that Utah State defense. They, really they have do. been sensational. They, they have just hung in there by a hair. And here's Williams, and he wants to go. Midfield. And Kerwin Williams tackled by Dave Clark finally as he breaks it open down to the 38-yard line. Just a dive. Split the defense. 45 yards. And it gets in field position. And now, there's still 4.36 to go, but they're in a great position here to use clock with the ball on that side of the field. Lots of clock. Now, of course, La Tech has three timeouts. They're going to have to start using it. They can get a stop here. They should use a timeout to stop. Chucky Keaton playing maybe his best game as an Aggie. There's a catch made by Tialavea. Two-yard pickup. The clock will continue to move as he stayed in bounds with 4.10 to go. It's a short gain. I would start to think about using timeouts. Coaches have different philosophies. You keep them for defense or offense. You, you just got to get the clock stopped because they're, they're, they're not going to be able to stop this, this game. It'll be over. We won't have time. Maybe gambling here that they can stop him on this series. Is that the thinking? That has got to be the thinking here. It's going to be under three minutes. Because they're not going to throw the football now. Two huge interceptions of Colby Cameron tonight. But the Utah State offense has played a sensational game. Trying to run their way to a whack title. Here's Williams. Tough sledding again off the right side of the 34 for a couple more. Third and six coming up. Called one right here. Very good. Now this puts you, the onus back on Utah State. They get to decide if they're going to throw it. They're going to run it. 
third and six. So a timeout called. 328 to go. Third down coming up for Gary Anderson, his team, thinking about a championship. 10-point game, Utah State looking at a third and six from the Louisiana Tech 34-yard line. Sonny Dykes D trying to dig in, get the football back for his team. Williams shifts in motion. Keaton looking to throw it, setting up a screen, it's incomplete. <laughs> Wanted Williams, the clock stops, and Tech still has two timeouts remaining. That was a great play to start the football game, but not so good right now. La Tech smelled that out. There was no place to go, plus they had pressure on Keaton. So they're going to punt it, and they want to pin them inside this 10-yard line. And this punter, this left-footed punter, has done a great job for them. He's got 24 kicks inside the 20 this season. 24 of them. Bennett trying to kill it inside the 10, a fair catch called for and made by Banks at the 13-yard line. So with 3.18 to go and a couple timeouts and a 10-point deficit facing Colby Cameron, the WAC title on the line, <laughs> it's come down to this. It's yeah. uh, developed into quite a finish. It has been a great football game. I am so appreciative of just being here. Watch it, call it. Well, definitely it's been great. one of the games that's been under the radar nationally. When you consider uh, what's at stake, a WAC championship, a, a BCS bowl potentially down the road. Should Tech find a way to win this? It's going to be an uphill struggle here in the last three minutes plus. You know, they've moved the ball well this half. I'm counting on them to be able to do it again. Four receivers for Cameron. They rush three. It's tipped at the line and incomplete. That was up front, B.J. Larson. There he is, 6'5", junior end. Oh, an inside rush. Just got in the throwing lane of the quarterback. He's lucky that ball wasn't picked up. A.J. Pata Ali'i, the junior, he may have got a hand up there from that tackle position. Second and 10. Cameron looking deep. Down the middle for Patton. He's got it in stride at the 40 and down to the 35. How about that delivery? What a throw. Uh, you, you've got to believe Utah State's going to be put, uh, protecting the post area, but not so fast. Kate Brady made a touchdown in saving time. 52 yards. Cameron again wants Patton. And it's incomplete this time. Good coverage applied by Will Davis. That has been the battle within the battle today. All day and night long. Seven catches, 154 for Patton. Cameron's over 300 now. 325, will it be too little too late? With 2.59 to go. We saw him moving down in a minute to score. A few minutes, a couple series ago. What can they do here? Two receivers to each side this time. Cameron to the sideline. Catch made by Richie Casey, and he's out of bounds at the 28. Seven-yard pickup, and it stops the clock. Casey, a fifth-year senior. Senior day here. There'd be no better way to go out than to come from behind and win this one. Remember, that stops the clock just temporarily. They, they, they've moved the ball back. It's going. It's moving. It's Third and three now. Here's Holly on the carry. Has a first down as he puts his head down to the 23-yard line. That was a collision. Lars McMillan. And Holly, he is a tough guy. And that clock rolling. Again, two timeouts left for Louisiana Tech. Patton split, bottom of the screen. Cameron looking his way, makes the grab, gets a foot down, out of bounds at the 18 with 2.24 left. As soon as that ball gets marked, clock will start. And there's an Aggie down behind the Louisiana Tech that, backfield that to 31. Will stop the clock. That's a big break for La Tech right now. They get to breathe a little bit. And that looks like. Patai Ali'i, the guy that deflected that pass early in the drive. 307-pounder out of West Valley City, Utah. 
the Snow Junior College. Boy, I used to look out there at some of those players. Couldn't quite convince some of them to come to North Carolina from all the way out there. Was Bo, Bo Jay actually was the injured Aggie. So Bo Jay Fili Moyatu, who is a first-team all-conference candidate, and they can ill afford to not have him out there. He's a playmaker. He'll come off. He plays their boundary side linebacker in that 3-4 defense. And they'll probably just sub a defensive back in there. Moving the defense around. Second and five from the 18. Bringing pressure. Here they come. Cameron, room to run. He's to the 10, and he runs out of bounds at the eight yard line. First and goal from the eight with two minutes and six seconds on the clock. I think score quickly here. That'd be, that'd be great for La Tech. They, once again, the, the clock's not going to stop unless they get it out of bounds on the next one. They, they're going under two minutes. Now it will stop when they get out of bounds. From the seven, hand off to Holly, cuts it back. It's Hunter Lee, he's in, touchdown, Bulldogs. How about that? Hunter Lee on the carry, his third rushing touchdown, and they're within four. And the big question now, if they can get this extra point through the uprights, Will they onside kick or will they kick off and try to use their timeouts to stop Utah State? It's going to come down to that. Do they believe the La Tech defense can hold them? Hunter Lee had the go-ahead touchdown run last year in the fourth quarter at Utah State in their 24-17 win. His touchdown here draws him within one score. And now a timeout call with this extra point coming up. by Utah State. Important extra point coming here for Matt Nelson. Hunter Lee on the carry. Former running back converted to wide receiver. He's one of those guys also under the radar. Flower Mound, Texas, like Dixon out of Strong, Arkansas. And uh, is developed into quite a star at this level. And they're going to review this, I, I, we understand. The points are on the board. They're going to review was the right knee down, and it appears it was right there. It was down, see the but look. where was the ball at the time? Remember, it's got to be indefeatable evidence. They want, they, they, they want, number one, they assume the call is correct, and then they have to get beyond doubt to overturn with indisputable video evidence. So right now it's called a touchdown. It's gonna to be hard to overturn it. You know what, Trey? I think he's about a foot short. Okay, now you look for the <laughs> ball though. Don't you look for the ball yeah, first before the, the knee? Okay. That's right. And it, on the from the end zone that we're looking at right here, right now, it does it looks like it's a touchdown. If you go back to the sideline, I think where his knee hits, it looks like he's a foot short which Utah State would love to see happen because we'll put more, give more time. Now there's that imaginary plane that you can break the plane with the ball in the air. Did he reach the ball across before the Doesn't knee came down? Doesn't have to cross, just has to touch the plane. Did it touch that plane? That's the question. I think the ball is too tough. It's just too tough to overturn that call. And they call it a touchdown. Yep. That, that's it. Not enough video evidence to that's overturn right. it. Exactly. And the touchdown stands for Hunter Lee. And that's big, because you know you run another play, potentially you don't get in, and more time off the clock for Sonny Dykes in this uphill battle. And now a big extra point for Matt Nelson. 67 of 70 in his career. Missed one against UTSA a couple weeks ago. No problem with that one. And they're within three with 154 remaining. Eight plays, 86 yards in just a minute 24. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's just, this, these two teams have battled. We knew La Tech had it in them. They have played a magnificent second half, and their defense has risen to the occasion on at least a couple of the drives and possessions by Utah State. How about these numbers, John? 613 total yards for Utah State, 560 
for Louisiana Tech, and the 560 is under their average of 577. That's true. They've played a subpar game on offense. <laughs> They're down by three. Well, you'll see Utah State set up here with a lot of players in the onside kick area. One player back to retrieve a deep kick. I I'd be surprised if they deep kick it. Each team with two timeouts. Nelson with the good hands team out there for Utah State. And he is going to kick it away. Williams is a deep man. And he will take a knee. They'll have the touchback with 154 to go. No time off the clock. Great kick. And now what it forces, it forces Utah State to make a first down. Tech has 378 yards of offense in the second half alone. But it will it be too little too late? It really comes down to their defense. Can they stop Keaton and the Aggies? It's, they, they, they haven't played good defense all year long. They, they've played fairly well in the second half. They've got to stop a first down. They've got to use two timeouts quickly here to, to, to get the clock to stop. I don't think Utah State's going to run the ball out of bounds. And I don't think they're going to throw it on first or second down. The Aggies, last three possessions, three punts. They'll start from the 25. The WAC title hanging in the balance. First down by Utah State, game over. Williams cuts it back, and he's across the 30-yard line. Good first down play of close to six yards for Kerwin Williams. And a timeout. One remaining now for Tech. Well, if, you know, if you're the Aggies, you put it on the shoulders of Williams and Keaton here, don't you? Absolutely. Some way, shape, or yeah. form. Yep. You got Keaton's got to fake the dive or the zone and pull it and run, stay in bounds, try to pick up a first down. Gary Anderson has done an amazing job in four years at Utah State. Four win seasons er, each of his first two years. Seven wins last year, the most at the program since 1993. This year. They're within a whisker of grabbing at least a share of the WAC title. They'll host Idaho next week. And that game is uh, for the outright WAC title should they win this one here. And they're surely going to a, a bowl game, back-to-back -back bowl games, the first time since 1960. Wow. They've only been to six bowl games in program history, two back-to-back -back since 1960-61. Second and five. Bulldogs with one timeout remaining. Ball game doesn't mean much to them right now. They want a first down. The national ranking on the line for Louisiana Tech in a 10-game whack winning streak. Williams shifts behind Keaton. Here's the option. Keaton pitches to Williams. They read it pretty well. They run him out of bounds. And Short the of the first stops. down. And the clock stops. That's what they didn't want to do. He needs to go down. Williams needs to go down before he gets out of bounds. Now he gets three yards, so they've got a third and two coming up at the 33. I, I, it makes it even more exciting. And we've had enough excitement. Haven't we? It's been awesome. Third and two. They're six of 14 on third downs, and they're going to empty the backfield. How about this? They split Williams out, bottom of the screen. Trey, this could be that quarterback draw, so they got to take away the quarterback. Williams now motions behind Keaton. Here's the option. Keaton keeps it. Hit and dropped short of the first down at the 33. They're going to get it back, as that was John L. White, the senior from Ruston. And just think, if Williams had fallen to the ground before he went out of bounds, they would have burned that timeout last time. Now it's burned. Now they got to... Buck 38 to get the ball back on the punt return. DJ Banks will be beat, will be back. He's a dangerous return guy. They use their final timeout. 138 to go, and Gary Anderson. And he'll count on his defense, and it should come down to this. One of the best defenses in college football against one of the best offenses. There's no question about it. And we've seen great defense play. This will be a little bit different for Utah State. They will be trying to play a little bit of prevent. No timeouts for La Tech. 
Bennett gets it away from his 23. Banks a booming kick. He hauls it in at the 15. Makes one man miss. Banks trying to get to the outside. Banks to the 20. And he's finally run out of bounds. Pretty good coverage. He had to run a long way to get eight yards. And a good return on a sky kick. Had to be 45, 50 yards in the air. Great hang time. In the second half, Louisiana Tech with Cameron at the helm. Their last six drives, five of them have been touchdowns. And they've been quick, though, too. I mean, they have not taken much time off the clock. Field, now, field goal ties it as well. Field goal, absolutely. Don't forget that. Field goal ties it. That's all they need. And the ball will stop when they go out of bounds. 77 yards in front of them. There's a screen caught by Patton. And he's cut down at the 27-yard line. That was a tackle made by Jake Dowdy. At the tunnel screen, that's run back into the middle of the field. Not a little surprised at that call. No timeouts remaining, nearing the one-minute mark. Cameron rolling, throwing low to Patton. Did he get it? He did. It's a first down grab to the 34. They'll stop the clock momentarily to move the chain. We'll see if they, I don't think he got out of bounds, so it will begin, right? There it goes, they'll now. run it now. Yep, under a minute. Whack title on the line, Cameron rolling right. Running it out of bounds to the 36. Good job. Very good job back in. Smart player. So much at stake here. Maybe, maybe a BCS bull bid. Orange Bowl officials are on hand watching this with Louisiana Tech. They need to get in the top 16 to be invited, but they still have a lot of real estate in front of them. The WAC title, just one of the things hanging in the balance for Dykes and company. Trey, they've got to get at least another 35, 40 yards. Blitz coming. Cameron, Patton, out of bounds. Catch made, first down for 47. Ten catches, 170 for Quentin Patton now. They're working the sidelines pretty well. Yeah, they, yes, they are. Utah State's got to do something to take away the outcut, but they don't want to give up the big game, big game in the post. Empty backfield, five receivers, here comes the blitz. Cameron, wide open is White. He has a first down, and he's out of bounds at the Aggies 42. Pick up a 12. A lot of time on that clock. They're just moving it down. They've got to have some rotation to take away these outs. Matt Nelson has struggled with his confidence of late, the field goal kicker for Louisiana Tech. They're hoping it doesn't come down to that. They're thinking touchdown here. 15 yards away from kicking a field goal, Trey. Again, that five receiver look. Aggies showing blitz. They're coming with a couple linebackers. Cameron's going to run it. Runs to the sideline. He's tripped up and he goes down. That's a big play. The clock will run with 36 seconds. Got to scramble. Got to get lined up. Maybe even spike it. Clock running. It's second down. They're trying to get set. It's at 22 seconds now, and he spikes it. Costly stumble. He tripped up. Couldn't get to the sideline. I, I, I'm not sure if he got hit. I think he stumbled on the grass. I'm not sure, but he was running, trying to get out of bounds. Great coverage. They changed up the coverage play man to man. Let's see. He stumbled on the turf. Holy smokes. Well, the Aggies are trying to get people on the field here. Oh, where they snap they, they and caught a break a little bit because they looked to the sideline in the freeze. Only 21 seconds to work with. Cameron rolling, throwing, catch. No, it's dropped. It appeared that Hunter Lee had it, and he dropped it at the 20. It looks like it just goes through his hands. He timed it well. Looked to me a little bit like he tried to body catch it instead of catching it in his hands, which sometimes is a real problem for receivers. And now it's fourth down. They're out of Nelson's range. They're going to go for it here, fourth and four. Nelson's career long is 47. This would be about a 53 yarder. They're saying, no, we're going for it here. Gotta, this gotta is convert. it. Got to convert first down here. They're bringing here comes everybody. The blitz. They're bringing the house. Cameron, catch made by Holly. He's got a first down, 20. And he's out of bounds with 10 seconds to go. Now they're in field goal range. Yes, they are. And they could take one more crack at the end zone. They could take one. And they probably should. This quarterback's smart enough. He 
He's had a couple interceptions in the end zone, but he's smart enough. Wow, he got it away. Big play by Holly. Boy, is he clutch. 21-yard pickup. Ball at the 15 now with 10 seconds, no timeouts. It's got to be a play to the end zone or out of bounds, or this thing's over. That's it. Touchdown or field goal. You cannot be tackled in bounds. Keep an eye on Patton, number four, bottom of the screen. Cameron looking that way. Cameron rolling, throwing. He just threw it away. Smart. They were trying to get Holly one on one, and he made the move to beat Fackrell inside into the post area. Just couldn't quite get the ball to him. Matt Nelson will be called on here for a field goal attempt to send this one into overtime. Throughout his career, he has been amazing. Chris Boniel, Matt Stover, Josh Scobie, Nelson, they have all been good, but he struggled with his confidence, missing five of his last six field goals coming in. Did not attempt a field goal last week. This one from 32 yards for the tie. Nelson got it. We get overtime, baby. <laughs> what a football game. Holy smokes, I tell you what. And I didn't pay attention to be here. I'm thrilled. What a ball game. You got to feel good for the senior. He's battled back some demons. Snap hooked a couple of them a couple weeks ago against UTSA. Delivers in the clutch. And we're going to overtime with the WAC title on the line. New right away. You're talking about a team hanging in there and, and, and saying to themselves, we're going to keep playing. Play after play after play. Give La Tech a lot of credit coming back. 11 plays, 62 yards. They didn't have any timeouts to work with, and they got it done. Yeah, you think about Kerwin Williams going down to take that timeout away. That would have been the game. They've been one of the most exciting teams in college football throughout the course of this year. Lost by two points to Texas A&M in Shreveport, 59-57. They lead the nation in total offense. Second to Oregon in points scored at over 53 per game. And they erased a 24-point deficit here in the second half. Yes, they have. And, and once again, a, a great team effort. Probably their best team effort. Defense, special teams, kickoff return for a touchdown, and offense together in the second half. Probably their best half of the year. Well, as good as Nelson should feel about that one, inevitably, it seems to always come down to kickers in the overtime period. You got you, you can only remember, you have to have a selective memory, right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, and of course, U Utah State has struggled a little bit with the La Tech defense recently. So, here we go. And the keys for both of these teams were what they did in the red zone, and that's really what we're going to see here in overtime. How you do in the red zone, starting from the 25-yard line. Utah State was snuffing them out. They were one for three, La Tech was, against Utah State in the first half in the red zone. Better here in the second. Gary Anderson, his team is up 41-24. He's going to head into overtime tied at 41. Erwin Williams and Colby Cameron out there for the coin toss. So Tech has the option. And you almost see it 100% of the time. You go on defense first, so you know what you need to score when you get the football. And these fans have seen it's been a roller coaster ride here. Huh? Give that quarterback some even more credit. I know he's gotten a lot of credit this year, going on an unbelievable streak of 419, 429 passes in a row without an interception. Through two tonight, but he kept playing two. That's a credit to his character and his makeup and his unselfishness as a football player for La Tech. 
total offense, 622 for Louisiana <laughs> Tech, 621 for Utah State. So we got to get here. <laughs> I think you said that about four hours ago. <laughs> well, Cameron now has 391 yards. He's thrown the ball 58 times. The only thing that comes close to well, he at Texas A&M against the Aggies, he was 44 of 58 for 450. He's had games like that, and this is on the biggest stage possible with Orange Bowl officials in attendance and a whack championship hanging to the balance. Liberty Bowl officials, Independence Bowl officials, they're here. Aggies get the first possession of overtime. Winner grabs a share of the WAC title. Williams puts his head down, first down carry all the way to the 12-yard line, 13 yards for Williams. You think they have some confidence in the run game? That guy is, he is a north-south runner, yet he can get to the perimeter and take it upfield out there too. Williams with 158 on the ground. Keaton has rushed for 121. How about this? They go with a bunch set, four receivers, top of the screen. With the diamond look out there, four receivers to the top. Keaton throws it over there. They set up blockers for Williams. He's to the five, and he has seven, eight yards inside the five. It'll be a second down. They can get a first down at the two-yard line. Absolute known screen situation. Great blocks out there in front of Williams. A wall of blockers. Sidney Dykes D trying to dig in here, force a field goal. Second and two from the four. Hand off Williams straight ahead, puts his head down, has a first down, has a touchdown. The Aggies score on their first possession. There was some power running there, wasn't it? Let's give it to 25. A little power oh. Just slammed it in there. And now the all-important extra point for Nick Diaz. The sophomore from Redondo Beach. And it's good. 48-41. Now the Bulldogs will have to answer. It's got to be comforting if you're Gary Anderson, knowing how good your D has been all year in the red zone. And you've got to be able to run the football, don't you? When you get it into that extra period with well, some success. Very important to run the football in this situation. And LaTeX is very good at doing it. But I, I, they're going to have to put it on this quarterback. Now, the question is, <laughs> I, I, I've got to believe that Utah State's a, a little tired, a little drained. They, they got to they gotta really suck it up right here and play great defense. From the 25, here's Dixon on the carry. Hit and wrapped up after a two-yard gain. Fili Moyatu is in there. Got some help from Jake Dowdy, the inside linebacker. Second and eight. Dixon comes out. Holly's in there now. Two receivers to each side, again, keeping an eye on Patton, bottom of the screen. The All-America candidate, Cameron Low throw, completion. That's Hunter Lee, isn't it? It is. It's short of the first down, but they've got a third and three coming up. Yeah, they, they get this, they're in four down territory right now. Come on, you're uh, Obviously, and that's why you like to give the other team the opportunity to have the ball first. So they know they've got two downs to make three yards. Need to get the football to the 15-yard line. Split backs this time. Dixon and Holly. Cameron wants to throw it. He's being pressured, and he throws it away. Here it is, fourth and three. They need three yards to keep their whack title hopes alive unless something crazy happens next week in that Utah State-Idaho game. We won in 12. This team has fought hard to be in the top 20. Right now, Utah State struggling to get lined up. First possession overtime. The Aggies with a touchdown. Bulldogs trying to answer here. They changed plays. They've changed defenses. Holly in the backfield. Patton 
Split bottom of the screen. Hand off Holly straight ahead. It's not going to get, get it, it done. And the Aggies are going to be WAC champions. They win it in overtime. They changed plays. Utah State changed defenses, and they got into the one to stop the inside zone run. Cat and mouse pretty much all game. Great second half by La Tech, but a big upset here in overtime. We thought it would come down to best offense, one of the best in the country against Gary Anderson's defense, ranked sixth in the nation in, in, a, in top ten in a lot of categories. That's what it did. Their D stood up despite the onslaught in the second half. They got it done when it mattered. They had to go into the fifth period to get it done, is what it, what it did. And that's sometimes what you know, you take a, a lesson from your coach. Gary Anderson was, was very confident during the week when we talked with him, and his defense performed, especially when it counted. A bitter loss for Louisiana Tech, the highest ranking ever, and they suffer their second loss this season. But a tremendous game as Utah State grabs a share of the WAC title. These programs, credit to Coach Dykes and Anderson, they've done tremendous jobs. Absolutely, they've both done great jobs taking over their programs. They're both going to bowl games. It's just a matter of when and who. And, and they go both got games to play, so they both got to close it out next week. Utah State will host Idaho with a chance to win the outright WAC title as Gary Anderson celebrates. And Louisiana Tech will go to San Jose State to close out their regular season. John Edgewood. Trey, it was a pleasure. What a great ball game to call. And I look forward to the next time. I tell you what, we couldn't have asked for anything better. For John Bunning, I'm Trey Bender saying so long from Ruston, Louisiana. Final score, 48-41 in overtime. The Aggies win a share of the WAC title. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Thanks for watching. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.